Good evening, everyone. My name is Lanny Shaughnessy, and I'm your host this evening. How are y'all doing tonight? Uh, I'm popping in just a few minutes early to make sure that everything is good with audio and video and all that wonderful stuff. How's everybody doing? I want to appreciate, I want to let you all know how much I appreciate you coming and hanging out with me. Uh, when we do these classes, your support uh, means a lot. I appreciate you all. The uh, Without you, I wouldn't have anything to do on these Tuesday nights. <laughs> We're going to play around with um, drawing tonight, guys and girls. We're going to do some. We're going to go to the drawing board. We're going to uh, look at some very cool kind of Celtic knot pattern designs and how we would approach uh, drawing and designing them. You'll be pleasantly surprised to see uh, how pretty much routine it is. Uh, and if you can get the routine down, uh, then creating the patterns isn't as difficult as one would think. So we're going to we're gonna get into that and everything. Uh, we're just a few minutes early, just giving everybody a chance to pop in. Uh, the class starts around 7.15, but um, the chat as always is live. You can ask questions as we go along. And um, uh, just to help me kind of break the questions out from the everyday conversation, if you could just kind of throw a question mark uh, in front of your question instead of, you know, normally you put the question mark at the end. But if you can throw a question mark uh, uh, in the beginning, then that'll let me be able to visually identify it as a question for me, and uh, we can um, I can then answer those questions and everything. But uh, good evening, Mark. Mark Lindsay. Hey, um, I have got to uh, I've got to answer your emails. Um, the uh, I haven't. You, you. Every time I see you, you keep telling me that you have an email, that you wrote me an email, and I'll be damned if I keep forgetting to go look at it because, you know, I'd like to, I'd love to get together and do, uh, you know, um, attend one of your events uh, and everything, and uh, I keep, I keep forgetting to go to the darn email and setting up a time with you and stuff. I'm gonna have to give you my direct phone number so we can communicate. Uh, like normal people because <laughs> I keep forgetting to go to my email uh, but um, how's everyone doing I hope everyone's doing well man look at all this all right we got some people popping in now okay we're just a couple of minutes away from getting started and um, hopefully you'll uh, uh, no mark not at all I just uh, honestly not at all I was, matter of fact, I was driving back uh, from a delivery the other day, and uh, I got a notification on my phone that you were doing a live. And as I'm driving on the highway, I was like, oh, man, I've got to get with Mark. I've got to get with Mark. Uh, and um, I keep, uh, honestly, I just, uh, I, it's on me. It's all on me. I keep forgetting. But um, the... Uh, Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, now that more people are coming in and everything, we're going to be working with uh, drawing. We're going to be drawing, uh, working with all of our shape tools, uh, you know, a majority of them, not all of them, but, uh, uh, and we're going to learn how to make some very fun and creative uh, Celtic knot patterns. I'm, I'm infatuated with Celtic knots and weaves, you know, and things. So you're going to learn how to do that in a 2D uh, aspect as far as Vetric V-Carve, Desktop Pro, and Aspire Concern you know, drawing and like if you were V carving the weaves or something. But we're also, tonight we're gonna do some modeling. So we are gonna be working in a spire uh, and we're going to uh, learn how to create 3D models of some of these patterns that we create. So hopefully you stick around for that. It's not gonna be a very late, late, late night class or anything. Uh, and I'm hoping that everything runs smoothly tonight and uh, uh, with no complications, but we are going to be doing 3D modeling in that part, when we get into the 3D modeling, that will be the Aspire software. We will be using the Vetric Aspire software to create those 3D models and patterns and stuff, 
Um, but the actual drawing and creating 2D carvings of these uh, patterns and, and, and weaves and stuff um, can all be done in Desktop Pro and Aspire, so uh, everybody, nobody's left out on this. All right? And uh, we'll... Um, We'll get through it together. All right, let's jump over to my other channel. Um, I'm on channel two here. Let's get me down in the bottom left corner there. And um, all of this stuff here in my green screen, that's all the stuff hanging on the wall that I just, I can't get around it, ladies and gentlemen, unless I kind of tilt that just a little bit. but. Um, that's me down here at the bottom. All right, let's see if we can, uh, let's see if we can at least get my head in there a little bit better. Wonderful. All right, so I'm not getting my head cut off there. Okay, so with the software, just so for you folks that are like, you know, I need to be visual. I got to see what we're talking about. What are we talking about and everything? We are going to learn how to draw from nothing cool creative Celtic knot weave patterns like you see here on the screen. And uh, we're going to learn how to create that illusion in the 2D realm, the 2D world of the weave of, you know, one strand going under another. Now, the when it comes to creating the 2d version of celtic knots and things uh we are you need to think of it like you are v carving this object or pocket cutting this object um and not 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 kind of a profile cut uh we want to be carving as a, kind of a v carve or a pocket so the bit is going to be cutting between two lines so we want to create the, the two lines that the bit will be cutting through. And we also want to create closed vectors. And so to start off with a simple explanation, uh, I'm going to simply draw a rectangle. And this rectangle is going to be um, 3 8 inches wide. And we'll just make it six inches long I'm going to bring it a little bit more onto the screen so everybody can see there we go all right so imagine that this in between these two lines is our path that we're cutting now I'm going to uh, create a control C that's copy then control V, that's paste. So I've just pasted a copy onto the original. So I can kind of move that out of the way. I have a copy there. And I'm gonna hit the number zero key on the keyboard. That's just does rotations. Clockwise is zero. Counterclockwise is number nine on your keyboard. And that moves in 45 degree increments. So I'm gonna hit the number zero key twice, okay? And let's move this over here for just right now. Now, when we have two parts that are weaving together, one part is going to be passing through while the other is passing under. And we need to create that spacing uh, so that we can trim to create those gaps. Now, I'm going to take... Uh, and hold down the control key and pull another one of these here side by side so we can kind of look at them both let's get them both somewhat on the screen there and what I want to do is uh, one at a time for right now one at a time I want to offset uh, the object I want to offset in uh, basically two directions um, I want to go inward and outward so 
if I were to take this rectangle here and offset it, I have found that an offset distance when drawing most of these weaves, I found that a, depending on how big of the gap you want where it looks like the part is coming under the other, where one part's coming under, we gotta create that separation. Depending on how wide you want that separation, a 16th of an inch or a 32nd of an inch, half of that, those two numbers, one of those two create a good spacing to uh, you know create this illusion. So let's start with this one over here. I'm gonna offset outward a 16th of an inch and um, I'm going to uh, come in on this one here and I'm gonna offset outward a 16th of an inch. Over here, I'm gonna go a 16th of an inch and on this one, I'm gonna go a 16th of an inch. And what we have now is we have kind of this inner kind of trim area where you, these four smaller squares are on the corners. We have kind of an inner trim area and depending on which line happens to be intersecting, one's always gonna be passing through, the other one's gonna be going under, right? Whichever line it is, uh, depends on which one that we trim. So, let's take our scissors, and let's say that our vertical line here is the one passing through, the horizontal line is the one passing under. So the vertical line, now remember, the two inside lines, the two inside lines, that's our path. That's the path that the bit's gonna be cutting. We always wanna keep that. The little gaps that we created, that 16th of an inch offset, that space out there, those are where we're gonna be kind of trimming in between, always on any one of these shapes that we create. So try to remember that. So remember, this path vertical, I said is passing through. So we're going to go ahead and I'm, I'm not gonna click, I'm just gonna hold down my mouse button and drag my mouse along these four lines, okay? So now this is passing through. Can you see that? It's passing through. Now over here on the side, I'm gonna trim away these two lines and then I want to remember you always keep your path. So this is my path. You delete everything else. In this case, delete is trim. So we're going to take our scissors and trim that away and that away. Over here, trim that away and that away. So now we have our path, right? Same thing on this side. We trim here and then we get rid of the outside. That, that and that. So now we have this illusion that this vertical one is covering the one going underneath it. So here, this separation of the space, this gapping, is where the part is coming down and then going under. So it's that downward, that gap that you would see there as it comes under. That's kind of what the illusion is. Now, let's say on this one that my horizontal line is the pass through and my vertical line is the one passing under. The horizontal line, we're going to clear out that line, right? So now we have no obstacles, no roadblocks on our path. And then this path is the one going under. So we're going to trim away this and that, and then we're gonna get rid of this and that, keeping just our path, right? Just our path. Over here, same thing, trim away this, get rid of that and that. So now that vertical one is passing under the horizontal one. Rinse and repeat for all the patterns that we are creating to create the weave, okay? So if you can grasp this, then creating any kind of weave pattern in a 2D realm, uh, you know, V carving or pocket cutting it or what have you, not the 3D. Now 3D is gonna be different. We'll talk about that down the road. But in a 2D realm, creating these, this, this void, if you will, 
So it's the illusion of that one is hidden by the other to create that kind of over under weave. Um, the offset, that outward offset that we created, that outward offset that we created, created that gap. That gap is that 16th of an inch offset. If you want the gap a little closer, make it a 32nd or whatever, you know, but don't go too wide because we don't want like if we have a roadblock here, you know, or, or you know, our path here and we're coming way out here and way up under, we don't want to do that. We don't, we want to, we want it to where it's just like folding under, okay, where it's just folding under. So we want our gap to be visible, but not too big. So let's vertical line passing through, horizontal line passing through, right? The, that's what it looks like. Now, let's take a look at all of our, like one of our shapes here, right? We have our vertical line. It always passes through on one, weaves under another line. So if there's a path where there's multiples, you go over, under, over, under, over, under. In this case of this circle here, this circle went under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, right? That pass through, pass through is over, where it's cut off, that's under kind of thing. And that's what we're looking to achieve, right? So let's start off with a simple pattern. Uh, we're gonna take a rectangle, the one that we just kind of looked at so you can kind of get an, an idea of what, what's going on here. We're gonna take a rectangle. Now, I have found that I like my path your path really kind of depends on how wide you want your weave, right? Think of that bit cutting in, uh, you know, in between those two lines. So how wide do you want that? Think of it as a, a, a strand of rope, if you will. You know, how wide do we want that weave? I personally like, depending on what the design is, I like a quarter inch, three eighths, no, really no more than a half. Uh, if I go anything more than that, then I'm making a really big pattern, really huge pattern, right? But in normal, like this is a 10 inch by, um, what size is this board? Uh, well, this one is 24 by, this board is 24 by 16. And so the, uh, I want, I don't want too wide of a, of a, of a pattern. Now I am going to change that board size for a moment. I'm going to go back and I'm going to go 10 by 10. Uh, I'm just gonna gotta go square for right now. So 10 inch by 10 inch, 10 by 10, and half inch is fine. Again, today is uh, more about the drawing and creating the shapes and all, more so than uh, the carving and stuff. Now, let's get back to this rectangle. Number one, this rectangle is huge, right? We're not gonna be drawing this 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 huge of a rectangle. Uh, it's nearly an inch and a. Uh, inch and a quarter wide. Uh, so like I said, I either like a uh, three eighths inch, um, three eighths inch wide uh, path, quarter inch, or sometimes a half. It just depends. You can pick your, you know, whatever you like, you know, create a couple shapes and kind of see what it likes. Because once the shape is created, you can scale it up and down just like, you know, everything. But if I'm creating, I kind of, my go-to for me is three eighths. That's kind of my go-to. All right, so I've got a three eighths inch wide uh, line here, rectangle here, and I'm gonna take this rectangle and I'm gonna make it shorter. So I'm gonna hold the shift key down while I grab this middle outside white box. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna move both sides at the same time. Okay, and I'm gonna go here. So this will be my rectangle. Now I'm gonna go into node editing mode and on the end I'm gonna take and put my mouse right on the line and I'm gonna make that an arc now it's gonna fully go out to a full arc for based on that spacing and that's what I want boom okay same thing here right click to arc all right cool beans 
Now, on my shape here, I'm going to, um, when we come up here and we, you know, on our shapes and everything, uh, that sixteenth of an inch offset that we did, or thirty second, whatever you want your gap to be, I want a sixteenth of an inch offset. I'm going to do that now, while I have the single shape, and then I'll do any copying and pasting and duplicating and all that stuff once I create the full offset. Um, there are no inside vectors here. If this was a dual. Uh, rectangle like there was you know like another rectangle inside then I would create a sixteenth of an inch offset inside that second inner rectangle as well but since this is just a single shape I only need the outside offset so offset outward a sixteenth of an inch oops one time just once once I double click alright there's my shape now that shape, I'm going to hit Control C for copy, Control V for paste, V as in Victor, and then I'm going to hit the number zero key twice. One, two. Okay. Cool beans. Let's go ahead and take this object and center it to our board. There we go. And let's take in and, hey, Woody Withers, thank you, man. I appreciate that, Super Chat. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Woody. All right. I appreciate you very much. Um, and uh, this is, uh, I appreciate that. This is um, our first shape, just a simple. We just kind of made a simple cross, if you will. Now we're going to draw a circle. The circle is going to be weaving uh, inside and outside of, you know, kind of the four outsides, depending on what you want. But this time, I'm going to do two circles. Uh, I want a bigger one and a smaller one. I'm going to create a little bit more of a, 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 of a pattern. So the first circle, I'm going to start at zero, zero here, and I'm going to draw that out. Okay. I'm going to go right about there. And this, right, as of right now, it's a single line, right? And I need, I need a double line. Remember, my path, right? So I'm going to take this circle and I'm going to offset it inward. I'm going to go inward, three-eighths of an inch. I want it to be the same width as my other path that you see on the screen, right? So I'm going to offset that circle inward, 0.375. Hold on a second. Bear with me a minute. I don't want to do that. Wrong one. That's not the one. We're not ready for offsetting uh, that path at all. My, forgive me, okay. The spacing right here Okay, I, I want the spacing of my path to be the same as here, and that is 3 eighths of an inch. So when I go 3 eighths offset, oops, got to select that. It looks odd, you know, we want it to kind of look like this right and it looks odd because it's such a small part it's not very big and everything and what you're looking at is on this path here my single path right there that is the uh, the two roads right that's the two roads it's not like you see up here which is a U shape and um, we'll get to that in just a minute. So this one's very basic. 
and then we're gonna create the more intricate one. <laughs> Sorry, I'm almost confused myself there for a second. I don't wanna start off that way. All right, now on my circle here, I need to create my 16th of an inch offset, the trimming path, but it has to be on the outside of this circle and on the inside of this circle, okay? So, but if I have them selected, I only have to choose, when I do the offset, I only have to choose outward because the software is smart enough to know that there's an inner circle and it reverses it. So when I go outward a 16th of an inch, it's gonna do that 16th of an inch on the outside and, oops, I'm sorry, and on the inside. Sorry, I thought I had that ringer turned off. Let me fix that right now. Bear with me just a moment. Thought that I had that ringer turned off. Okay. So it automatically, because we had both of the circles selected, it automatically created that, it automatically created that uh, offset and everything. So now this is just a single cross with the illusion of a kind of a circle going around it. We're gonna do the doubles here in just a moment. So take our scissors and our vertical is either gonna, we, we decide, you, you pick what you want. Is it gonna be a pass through or is it gonna be an over under? I want, I'm gonna have the circle be the pass through and this be the, the vertical being the over under. So I'm gonna clear out this path here, and then I'm gonna clear out this, get rid of that and that. Come down here, get rid of this, that, and that. So now I have this path here coming through over under. Again, this is just a single, I'm trying to get, I'm gonna build you up to the more complicated ones. All right, now we went through here, so this one's an under, so it's, a, it's reverse. So now we cut here, get rid of this and this, and then down here, get rid of that and that. And then of course, this one is a pass through, so we get rid of those lines, so over, under that kind of thing all right coming around it's an over so gonna cross that this one's passing underneath so we get rid of that it always leaves these kind of corners and most of the cases remember to get rid of them we're keeping just our path whatever it whatever it may be okay and get rid of this get rid of that and that so it's passing over this and then this one is going under and then it's going under there now coming into the center we have these two intersections that are happening here uh, at this point you could almost pick which one you want, but you don't. If it's going under, this this vertical is going under this path here, then it goes over the next one, and then under the next one, under, over, under, over, okay? So you don't, don't ever have two overs and two unders and that kind of thing. So this one's going under that circle there, so in this case it goes over this one. And then we clear away and this clean up our lines when we trim. And I'm not clicking, I'm holding the left mouse button down and whatever line the scissors touch, it will get rid of when it does, you know, when it, when it goes over and under. Now, this is just a simple cross with a circle around it, kind of, you know, that, that kind of thing. So there's nothing special about this at all. No, you know, it's, it's boring. But that's our concept, right? Over, under, over under so over it's passing through under it's passing under over it's passing through under it's passing over all right basic shape now let's get rid of this 
Let's get rid of this. Now we are creating this shape, which looks like almost like two paper clips hooked together, if you will, right? And what that shape is, again, we're gonna start off with a rectangle. Now this time, we're gonna have two lines and our path is gonna be as wide as you want it. Now, I want this rectangle, it doesn't matter what size I really want it initially, kind of this area here, if this is the inside of the outside rectangle, this area here kind of represents the air gap uh, and stuff. And so I want um, to offset this inward and I'm gonna go 0 0.25. I think it's 2.5 on this one. Oh, I went the wrong direction. Inward. Yeah. That's what I want. But before I create my offset, I want to create my two rounded tops and bottoms. Okay. And I'm actually going to go outward instead of inward. But I want to create my rounded top and bottom, why, why draw what you can copy, right? So I wanna get my shape completed, node editing, right click to arc, right click to arc. Starts off very similar to the little single one that we just did, but now we're creating, th this is gonna be kind of a, a dual path, so we're gonna create an offset of this. And I'm going to go outward. I think outward's gonna look better. And I'm gonna go offset outward. So think of this like a NASCAR raceway. You know, we only have left turns, <laughs> right? The router bit is cutting between these two paths right here, okay? Now we select these and now we create the offset, the small offset that creates our trimming boundary. So that's gonna be the 16th of an inch. 0 0.0625. And because both of these are selected, I only have to go outward. The software knows that there's one vector inside of another. So it automatically reverses the inside vector so it, it offsets it inward instead of outward. That's an automatic thing. You don't have to do one at a time. I don't have to select this and go outward and select this and go inward. Later, we will on other shapes, but not this. So we can select this and we can just go outward a 16th of an inch and it will create that inward offset and that outward offset. Cool beans. All right, now, just like we did before, we're gonna take this, copy and paste, Control C, Control V. Zero key twice, one, two. All right, now our raceway, we've got four lines going on here, right? Kind of like the illusion of four lines, right? Um, Let's draw our circle again. Draw our circle. Our circle is gonna have an offset of a quarter of an inch just like the other raceway. So we'll offset that. Pick your poison inward or outward. I'm gonna go outward on this one, quarter of an inch. Just kind of depends on what you want, you know, how close you want it to, you know, we want to keep openings. That's what gives the illusion of something looping around another, right? If we're, which you're going to see later when we're doing braids and all, we want to keep the gap small. But in this case, we want to be able to see that loop kind of go around and under kind of thing. All right, select both of our circles, do our small offset. 16th of an inch. And again, we only have to go outward because it'll do both. Okay. 
And now we have this path here. So I'm gonna start over here. We're gonna, we're gonna have the circle pass through. So it's gonna go over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, and then back to over, right? So over, let's get our scissors. Now you have a choice. I kind of, I kind of uh, recommend when you're first getting started is that you stay in the area and get it all cleaned up and tidied up before you move to the next one. But you can also just go ahead and, you know, trim your over, leave that, trim that, leave that, that kind of thing too. But you might get a little lost if you jump ahead. So I recommend focus on one area move to the next it doesn't take very long all right so let's get kind of up close and personal here this circle is passing over and by the way my middle two lines that's my path okay that quarter inch spacing that's my path so that's passing through this is passing under Now notice when I trim away, it trims away a lot of these vectors. All that stuff is excess. So it trims it away and gets rid of it. So that let's, makes it less complicated for us. That's what makes these so easy to create. And you can do all kinds of shapes. Wait till we get into, we're about to get into some fun shapes. But um, when we're trimming, it trims the line over to the next intersection. So it gets rid of it. And everything so we don't even have to worry about all this excess left over what do we do with it kind of thing when we clear away everything except for our path it trims away all of the stuff so again this one's passing through so down here let's do the other side before we move on and I want you to I want to kind of focus on this for a minute remember this is our path between the two inside lines so everything else goes away that and that and you see when I trimmed those areas away it got rid of all those other lines and it trimmed it all the way to the intersection so it trimmed them back it got rid of them all the way to the next intersection that's great for us we don't have any cleanup to do we have a nice clean path so now this loop is going under this one right all right so our circle went over here so now it's got to go under so we trim you're, you're either trimming horizontally or vertically literally in all of these weaves right so we trimmed uh you know horizontally here now we're trimming vertically right that kind of thing but uh so we trim this away there's our path nice and clean the main path is passing through so we get rid of those lines clear our path and then our circle continues over here. Oops. Trim that, 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 that. And then that little nub there. And this little nub there. Clear all that up. All right. So there's that. Now, that circle comes around. I kind of do the outside before the inside, but uh, it went under this weave. So it goes over this weave, right? So we trim that, clear away that corner, clear away that corner. We trim this, clear away that corner, clear away that corner. There's our path. So it went over. Now this one, it goes under. And you see almost, if you look very carefully, it almost kind of shows you where you're cutting next. Uh, the You know, the path that you're creating and stuff because of this little corner here. But... I'm not going to try to confuse the situation. It's just very simple to over, under, over, under. All right. Our loop is passing through, right? So we get rid of these lines. Remember, our two inside lines are our path, that quarter inch path. And then trim this away. Okay. That circle is coming around. It just went under there, so it goes over this next intersection. So it goes over, so we're gonna clear that out of the way just so you can get the visualization of it over. And then we trim away, clear that corner, clear that corner, leaving our path behind. 
trim away, get rid of that corner, get rid of that corner. Coming over, and now this one goes under, so we trim this way, get rid of that corner and that corner. Our path is passing through, trim that and that. Almost done with the circle, then we go do the inside stuff. So it went under here, now it goes over here. So it goes over. Oh, if you accidentally trim a line that shouldn't be trimmed, Control Z back up and make sure your mouse doesn't hit a line that's not supposed to. We have to keep our inside path, okay? All right, come over here. Oh, did it again, undo, there we go. Get rid of that corner and that corner. All right, now this one passes under. This one passes through and this one passes under. All right, that completes the weave on the circle. Now, how do we know which way we trim the inside interlaps is what's happening on the outside. This loop here is passing over here. So it has to pass under on this intersection. So we come in and get rid of that, clear that path. Get rid of that. Okay, so it passed over and then under. This one's gonna be over. So we clear the path and then we trim away. Oops, undo. Get rid of this corner, get rid of that corner, right? We only keep our path. Now the vertical, you can do it from the top or the bottom, your choice. It's passing under here, so that means it passes over here, right? And then we trim away to create that illusion that this horizontal one's going underneath it to create that gap. And then as it went under, it goes over, and over here it goes under. Under, sorry, I'm mumbling to myself. It goes, it goes over, it goes under here. And that's it. Now, this vertical, it should be exactly right. It goes under and then over, right? So, oops, I'll do that. Over, under, oops. I lost a line right there. Hold on a second, there we go. All right. Uh, over, under, over, under, all the way around, over, under, over, under, right? It, it, no matter what you do, every intersection, it's, it's, it's weaving up and down, okay? So now we have this pretty cool kind of um, shape that we could, you know, keep it like this. We could rotate it 45 degrees. You know, some people kind of like you know, the pattern looking like that, right? You know, that kind of thing, whatever the case may be, right? Whatever you want your shape to be. You know, hey, David Wilson, hey, Ken Singleton, Charles and David, thanks for popping in late, guys, I appreciate you. Um, so uh, that is, uh, you know, how we could create some simple weave pattern, right? Uh, you know, create that kind of Celtic knot look. Let's V-carve, let's V-carve this so you can see what it looks like as a V-carve. Let's create a tool path. And you could do a pocket cut or a V-carve, your choice. I like the V-carve. Uh, let me delete all of these. Delete all. All right, so I'm gonna select this and I'm gonna do a V-carve tool path. I'm gonna limit the cut to an eighth of an inch deep. I'm gonna use the 60 degree V bit. I'm not gonna use any other bits, just the 60. And I'm gonna calculate this tool path. So starting at zero, flat depth at an eighth of an inch, that's a limit. And then I'm going to use the 60 degree V bit to calculate. And you don't have to limit, I'm just doing that uh, just to, you know, um, 
uh, show it and everything, but you could do the full V carve depending on how wide your lines are. All right, let's preview the visible toolpath. All right, so that's our cut. And if we added some color to it, right? Pretty cool. And again, that 16th of an inch offset that we create to kind of create our little trim path, if you will, that is that void. That's that wood space right there, that void between the actual cut. Right, so if you want your voids a little closer, a little further, I don't, I wouldn't go too much further, right? We got to give it the illusion that it's just going under, right? It's diving under that line and everything. Sixteenth of an inch, I found, is a really good offset uh, all the way around. Hey, Brooks, thank you, I appreciate you for the super chat. Thank you. Um, I think that uh, I think that a sixteenth looks really good. If I were going to do anything different uh, or go smaller with a tighter gap, it would be half of that, a 32nd. You know, it's going to be kind of one of those two, you know. Uh, but uh, this is what this particular shape looks like with the 16th of an inch offset. And again, it kind of gives that nice pattern. All right, now, one of uh, the more popular. Um, shapes that you would see uh, in Celtic weaves are these oval type shapes, uh, whether it be the triquetra uh, with the three uh, arms here or four or five or six or seven or eight or all that stuff. And um, the uh, when we create shapes like this, we are going to be creating a basic arc, <laughs> sorry, arc to start with. And then I'll show how, we're gonna show how to create these patterns and stuff like this here in just a minute. So uh, if we were doing kind of a triquetra, uh, it would be that kind of arc. Now, we can also do circles, overlaps, or we can do kind of odd shaped circles that have a little bit of a wobble to them and stuff. And where you see these, if you, if I go over, if I take a quick peek over at the clip art in Vetric that comes free with the Vetric software, if I go to the clip art gallery and I go down to our weaves, right? You will see shapes and patterns, some of the most common shapes and patterns, and I'll just throw them on the board so that you can see uh, the triquetra weave. Let's throw that one right there. This is a 3D model. So if we look at the 3D view, that's kind of the triquetra weave. We're gonna learn how to create those from scratch today uh, and everything, but uh, that's kind of a, you know, one of the a common Celtic knot. Uh, also in Wicca, uh, the Wicca religion, uh, you know, it's, the, it's a symbol. I don't know what it is. I'm not gonna get into that, but uh, the, center shape there. If we look at that in the 3D view, these are the 3D models that come with the Vetric software, right? These over under kind of Celtic weaves. And then let's get rid of that. Uh, let's go with this one, right? This one, let's go look at that has kind of this, uh, you know, overlapping and everything. This one you would think uh, would be difficult to make uh, and stuff. It's actually not. We're gonna, I'll show you, I'm gonna show you how to make that in both the 2D version, V-Carve, and in the 3D version. All right, let's get rid of that. Now, saying all of this and showing you how to draw these things and stuff, how much time does it take to carve, uh, to carve that one symbol, that toolpath that we just created uh, for that small uh, weave there? Based on my speeds and feeds and my uh, bits and everything, um, about uh, 13 minutes 
on that uh, object that is um, uh, about four by four inches and everything. Based again, I'm flattening it out. Now, if I was doing it as a full V carve, no flat depth with just the V bit, take out the flat depth because I got the small bit flattening everything out. That's why it's so long. If I did just a straight up V carve on that, um, then you would be, well, let's get it on the board. <laughs> let's get it on the board. Come over here. All right, one more time. If I were doing just a straight V carve of that pattern, then you would be looking at a time of about three minutes to carve it. Okay. So the 13 minutes is where it's doing all the flat work. You know, it's flattening that out. It's limiting it at that eighth of an inch. If I did the full carve, which just so you know what it looks like, preview the visible toolpath. Same, it looks like the same thing. It's just carving to the full V based on the space of my line. So it looks at 100% the same, right? But let me turn off the color uh, so you can see the V carve and the depth. So this is carving about 0.28 inches deep, right? And I limited it with the flat depth to an eighth of an inch. And so it had to, that small bit tip because I wasn't using a clearance tool or anything had to do all the flat work, and that's why it was a 13 minute carve, right? Um, but we could just V carve it too, just depending on, if you're doing an inlay, this could be an inlay, right? That could be a, the female part of an inlay. Uh, it could be a, uh, you could be filling this with epoxy and you want that deep carving, that kind of thing, right? So totally up to what you're doing and all. Uh, it's either a three minute carve or a 13 minute carve in the case of my current speeds and feeds and all that stuff. All right. So let's look at the Triketra, the three arm, and then we'll take it to a four arm, we'll take it to a five arm and everything, and you're gonna see uh, just how, how uh, uh, simple it is to make and everything. And uh, hey, Miguel Rocha, how you doing in Home Assassin? Uh, you're right down the road, you're a neighbor. Okay, let's get back to our drawing tools. Let's get back to our drawing tools. Again, we're not, now, what I was gonna say before I answered uh, Tim's question was, I'm teaching you how to draw these, how to create and draw these from nothing, okay? Uh, but also, you know, there are, and I'll pull over the, uh, the window here. If you Googled, you know, Celtic weave patterns, there's lots of images and graphics and stuff like that, that of course that we could, you know, import images and trace them and all that stuff. But I'm teaching you how to create these or how to, how you would go about creating these from scratch. And this simple one that we're doing here, this triketcha, this three arm triketcha, turns into four, five, and then I'm gonna show you how we can take and create an actual intricate pattern with it just from starting off with a simple arc. Okay, cool. All right, here we go. All right, we're gonna start off with the arc tool. Now, when I draw my arc, the arc of the arc and all, that's important. If my arc is very shallow, then when it creates the two sides of the path, if you will, uh, it's the center is gonna be very hollow. And so that you can visualize what I'm doing here, I'm gonna take you up to one that I've already created, okay? I want you to visually see this. I'm gonna take the mouse, the mouse pointer, from here to here, that line is a simple arc, right? Now imagine if I had a straight line coming across this, and I'll do that, I'll draw a straight line across this from here to here, right? The height of that arc plays a role, okay? 
We don't want a shallow. We need some gapping in between, depending on how wide our band. Think of a band, all right? Your band, your your rope strand. You know how wide that strand is going to be. You know that's going to take up some space. And if our arc is shallow, then we don't get enough spacing when we create all the parts, right? So. In this case, I want a wide arc, a wide arc, okay? Now, I'm gonna take that arc and I'm gonna center it left to right on the board. Not that way, sorry, left to right on the board. There we go. Now, okay. Now, the um, Next step, we're gonna be learning how to use our rotate tool and our pivot point, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that arc and I'm gonna copy and paste it. Copy and paste. Now I have two, right? This one, I wanna flip it vertically. I wanna kinda of flip it upside down, if you will. Now. I do not have to go to the mirror tool to do that. The mirror tool I could, very much so. I could turn off the create mirror copy and the flip about job center, I don't wanna do that. And I could just flip it vertically, right? Right, it works. But I could also, I'm gonna hit undo, control Z. I could also, when I have it selected, I could just hit the letter V in Victor, V as, v as Victor, for vertical, or the letter H, depending on what I wanna do. In this case, I wanna flip it vertically, up and down. So if I hit the letter V on the keyboard, that'll do the same thing, and I don't have to open that tool if I don't want to. When I'm in transform mode, on any shape that I'm creating throughout the software, whatever I'm designing, no matter what it is, when I double click on an object that I create, I am in transform mode. And when I'm in transform mode, that means I can size, rotate, mirror or copy, all of that stuff without actually going into the tools, I can use keyboard shortcuts. And it's the, one of those things that you wanna learn. And uh, the now that I've got this arc rotated, right, or kind of flipped upside down, here's what I wanna do next. Here's my next move, okay? I wanna grab it and your mouse pointer, it's important, your mouse pointer, I wanna grab it on the end of the line. Now when my mouse, I don't know how well you can see it on the screen, and if you don't have, this, if you don't have the settings of your, your YouTube settings, uh, the little, little gear at the bottom corner of your screen, turn that resolution up to very high. You know, you, it might cause you to buffer a little bit, but turn it up to like you know, 100, uh, 1080p kind of thing high resolution so it's not blurry for you, but when I put the mouse over the end of the line, it creates kind of a crosshair with a crosshair with a square on it. That kind of lets me know I'm at that end point. And so when, I, when my mouse is at that end point, I'm gonna hold down the left mouse button and now I can drag it around and I'm gonna snap it I'm gonna snap it, because I have smart snapping and geometry snapping turned on here at the top. I'm gonna snap it to the end of my other arc. And what I just create, right? Kind of almost like an eyeball or an oval kind of thing, right? You know, kind of a lemon, <laughs> right? Whatever it is, all right? Now, and you're very welcome, uh, Vasilis. You're very welcome. Now, I need to rotate rotate so when I double click on this object by default the pivot point is always at the center of that object you can always tell where the pivot point is uh, or where the center is going to be by default is it's the center square when you double click on an object and put it in transform mode it's the center square that's the pivot point by default now if I single click my mouse on that center square, that's gonna give me the pivot point. You'll see the circle pop up. I can drag that circle anywhere that I wanna drag it, that pivot point, okay, wherever I want it. And I actually want it 
at the end of the line here. Okay, I want it right on where those two ends meet. That's my pivot point. Now, when I rotate, let me get this kind of here. When I grab this blue square here and I pivot and I rotate, I'm pivoting off of that pivot point. And I actually want to pivot and I wanna bring this up to the center line right there. I wanna bring it up to the center line. I'm gonna zoom in tight on that so I get right to it. I wanna bring it, I'm using the rotate still. I wanna bring it to that center line, okay? And you can see that I've kind of created that one leg, right? All right, now I'm gonna copy and paste. I'm not gonna draw another arc, copy and paste, copy and paste. Uh, and I don't care which one you copy and paste. It could be either one. I'm just gonna do the one I currently have selected. So Control C, Control V, okay? Copy and paste. And wherever you, oops, Control C, Control V. Um, I want this one that I had selected last, not the other one. Now, I'm going to rotate this, um, but first, I can open up the mirror tool. I wanna to mirror it, rotate, not rotate. I wanna rotate it, but I wanna mirror it first. I wanna flip it around, flip it around. I could, uh, I could, uh, open up the mirror tool, but again, just like I taught you, this time I need to go horizontally. I wanna flip it around left to right, not up and down. So I'm gonna hit the letter H on the keyboard to flip it around, okay? And it doesn't matter, I can snap this line to the top here, or I can snap this to the bottom here. You pick which one you wanna do, it doesn't matter. We're gonna, you, you pitch which way you wanna do. For ease, so it's kind of like, so you can see it, I'm gonna connect the two bottom lines. So I'm gonna grab it at the end of the line and I'm gonna snap it to the other end, right? My pivot point way over here, find that pivot point, right? If you can't find your pivot point, here's a little trick. Simply double click on the center square. It'll put the pivot point back there. So if your pivot point's off in the no man's land or something and you want it kind of back, just double click on the center square of whatever you have out selected and it'll put the pivot point back there, back to its default, if you will. Again, I'm gonna drag that pivot point down to that intersection. And I'm gonna rotate this and what do I want to do? I want to connect it with the other side, right? So let's get up close and personal and I want it at the center. Now notice, silly me, I moved my other line earlier, you know, a moment ago. It's okay, no big deal. When I double click on it to put it in transform mode, the software remembers where the pivot point was for that line. So it, it's, it's where it needs to be. All I have to do is fix my mistake and pivot it back where it belongs. Okay? I had inadvertently moved it off of that center line. You know, I had inadvertently moved it, not realizing it until just now when I got up close and personal with it but it's very easy to re-pivot it because the software remembers where the pivot point was the last time that line was selected, right? And what do we have there? We have our tri shape, right? Very cool. Now, none of the lines are connected and that's good. We don't want them to be connected. We have to create our pass. 
We can't use a single line when we're doing it as a 2D. We can't use a single line. Uh, but when we create our 3D models here in just a little bit, when we create our 3D models and stuff, we want the center line, right? We want the center line. But uh, we are doing V carving or pocketing, whichever one you choose. I like V carving. We're doing V carving, so we need the double lines, right? We have to create that path, if you will. Now, the while the lines are not connected, every one of these arcs has a start point and an end point. If I go into node editing, the start point is the green node. The end point is the black node, okay? I'm not joining these together yet, not yet. To create a closed vector, we'll do that later, not right now. We need them separate, okay, until we create our path. Now, the start point, you have to imagine yourself, I'm gonna draw a star, you're gonna be the star, okay? So you have to imagine yourself and where you're standing, you have to imagine yourself always standing, looking at the start point of the line. You're standing at the road, on the road, and you're going to be driving the way you're facing, right? You're not going to be driving in reverse. So you're standing looking at the road, which the start point there, and the start point always indicates which way the line is going. And if we zoom in, I don't know, it, it makes it smaller. It, it's, I hate that. But there's always, just past the start point, there's always a little arrowhead showing the direction that the line is going. Okay, there's always a little arrowhead pointing in the direction that that line is traveling. You are always standing in front of the green node and your left and your right your left, your physical left and right, determines left of the node, right of the node. That's an important distinction because when we offset, I want you to look at the way the words are written, outside or outwards, right, inwards, left. Let's look at a profile toolpath. When we're creating a profile toolpath, we have outside right, inside left, right? So outwards right, inwards left, All, it doesn't change. Well, you would think, you would think that the right you would think that that would be inside the line, right? It's not. You would think because it just looks like, visually like if I'm drawing another arc here, I'm drawing inside that line. And if I was drawing an arc here, I'm drawing outside that line. And that's not the case. It is based off of where the start point and the end point is, whether you're inward left or outward right. So in this case, the right side of this node is outward. The left side of this node is inward. And that's an important distinction you have to make when you're creating your paths. Okay? Hey, thanks, Mark. I appreciate you stopping by. So in this case, I am going to be kind of creating my path, if you will. I'm going to use, I'm going to use this vector as my center line. Okay, and I'm going to be creating a path following that center line and everything. So if I were to offset outward, right, let's say I went an eighth of an inch, 0.125. Because if I go outward an eighth of an inch and inward an eighth of an inch from that offset, my path between those two is a quarter of an inch, right? Eighth of an eighth. So let's imagine that I go outward an eighth of an inch. You would instinctually, just by looking at this, you would think it would go on the outside of the line when in fact it goes inward, 
or it, it does go outward. It's on the right side. You got to think of right and left. Right is in, I'm sorry, left is in, right is out from the start point. All right. So you got to think about that. Now, in this case, I kind of want to go, I kind of want to go in both directions, inward and outward. And I want to create that kind of that offset, right? In both directions. Okay. And that, ladies and gentlemen, creates my path. Forget the center line. Imagine now, imagine if you will, if I'm, I'm going to delete it for a second. Imagine if I deleted that. That's my path. That's my roadway. Okay. How wide do you want your roadway? Do you want it an eighth inch wide? quarter inch wide, three eighths inch wide, that kind of thing. The roadway where the V-bit is going to be cutting in between. How wide do you want it? That kind of thing. Now, in this case, if I go, if I offset an eighth of an inch and an eighth of an inch, that's going to create a quarter inch path. If I did a sixteenth and a sixteenth, that would give me an eighth inch path, whatever you want it to be. So I'm going to do um, a sixteenth in both directions to give myself an eighth inch path. Just, we'll go that. Okay. Now, I have to do that for each of my lines, each of my arcs. Let, let me say it the proper term. I need to do that for each of my arcs. Okay. So, I'm going to go in both directions on this arc. And again, just if I were looking at node editing, this arc starts up here, right? So this is the inside, this is the outside. Imagine if you're standing there, you're left to right, right? So inside left, outside right, that kind of thing. So if I did just do one line and I went outward, it would go outward, right? Let me hit select new so you can see it turn pink. It would go outward. Okay, because the starting point's up there. All right. Now, in this case, I want to go both directions. So I'm going to do that. Okay. All right. Now, so I did that arc and this arc. I got one more arc to go. And I'm going to go both directions there okay now our center line goes bye bye right so the center line I can select those three center lines and I'm not I'm doing this as a V carve not as a not as a model if it was a model I'd keep the center line I want you to understand that distinction we're not doing model we're doing V carving and pocketing kind of thing so the center line goes away okay I need my ends on all three of these. Let me get rid of this star. I need my ends to connect together to a nice point. That's the join tool. Okay, that's the join tool. So my next step, I always kind of go in this order. I'll, I'll create or offset join and then trim and clean up what I need to trim and clean up. So join is joining is kind of my extend tool. And I'm going to be when I click on one line and click on the other, it's going to create that intersection and that point where they would naturally intersect. This line, you see that pink line shoot out there and that line, they're going to naturally intersect right here. So if I simply click, click, it's going to create that closure. It doesn't close it. It doesn't close it. It just kind of connects it, if you will. But it's going to create it at that natural intersection. Up here, click, click. It's going to create that natural intersection. Over here, click, click. All right, you click on each line. I want to start here and go there and it'll do it automatically. Now, I need to clean up my inside of my path, the overlaps, right? 
So trim, trim. Trim, trim. Trim, trim. Okay. Now, if I was just doing a simple triquetra, this with no circles or anything around it and all that stuff, just this as my weave, my weave shape, then I'm going to do my little offsets, you know, my little trimming offsets, my 16th of an inch or 32nd, whatever you want to do. I'm going to create that so I can create my trim pass for my over under, right? So now these pass, okay, I still, I still need to create my, you know, 16th of an inch offset for the trimming little path and all that. And um, right now, these are not uh, joined together and that's good and all that. Uh, they are somewhat connected, but they're not joined together. So very similar to how I did this, the, the eighth and eighth in both directions, I'm only doing one direction this time, but I need to do my 16th of an inch, okay? We do not want to connect the lines together until all the until the final okay to create that closed vector all right okay so now I got to create my little trim path so offset I'm gonna go a sixteenth of an inch this time I'm only doing outward or inward I'm not doing both this time okay so in this case where my start point is and uh, is not if I went into node editing mode on this line, let's close this tool. My start point is here, right? My start point is there. All right, so let's go offset. I'm gonna go outward a 16th of an inch. Remember, right is out, left is in. My start point, I'm standing at the start point, left and right. So that's exactly, you would have thought, or some people would think that Hey, why didn't that go out? Why didn't it go out? It went in. It's not that. It's it's right, left, right, left, inward, outward. All right. So I don't want that line to go outward. I need that. I'm going to hit undo. I need that line to go inward. It's got to go on the other side. Okay. This one I need inward. But watch what happens wrong direction right that's a black node not a green one so it's out it's outward okay that's my little 16th and 16th path my middle lines are my driveway right cool hey Troy good evening uh, hey crystal how you doing all right cool um, all right so now I've got kind of that path there one arc at a time that was you know this so this one here we're gonna go wrong direction, inward. Okay, and this one here, that's correct. It's gonna start looking confusing and all, but we only, we're only really dealing with three kind of arcs, all right? All right, this one, next. And this one, next. All right. Just like we did before, extend tool, extend tool, click, click to connect that, click, click to connect that, click, click to connect that. Scissor tool, trim, 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 trim to close that off. Get rid of those, that little cross, that little crosshair. Now we're not trimming to do the weave yet. We're just cleaning up our ends of our connections. All right. We have just successfully created a triquetra with the trim pass now. We have the trim path. You got the, those four very familiar looking squares from earlier, right? So what do we want to do? I'm, I'm not going to do a circle yet. We'll add the circle in next. All right, what I'll do to save time and stuff, I'm gonna just copy and paste this. Copy and paste that. 
holding the control key down. <laughs> All right, let's get that centered on the board. Okay, um, just so I can do one with a circle around it to show you. All right, now our trim path. Okay, so think of the highway. Uh, is it gonna go over or under here? You pick, it doesn't matter which one, right? So let's get our scissors out. And in this case, I'm gonna go over. Now my path again is the two inner lines. Between the two inner lines is my path. So if that path is going over, I'm gonna clear that path, right? And then this one's going under. So trim, trim, get rid of the corners. Get rid of the corners. Trim, get rid of the corners. All right, so we got over, under, right? Now this one probably would have looked better uh, probably look better since it's only a quarter inch lines, you know, or, you know, eighth inch line, sorry. It would probably look better with a 32nd inch offset versus a 16th, but we're going to stick with it. All right. All right. So going over and this goes under this time. So we cut this direction, cut, clean up. This path is my going through between my two lines, right? Clean up that corner, clean up that corner. All right. So it's going over, now it's going under. Comes around and it goes over again. So clear that path and then do your under. And there you go, right? That's your Tricatra Celtic Weave, right? Over, under, over, under, just a, a continuous loop, if you will. All right, let's add another element to it. Let's get rid of that. Let's bring this one over and center it on the board. Okay, now I'm gonna add a circle. So again, I'm creating my center line for my circle. And I'm gonna offset it in both directions to create my little eighth of an inch path, right? Rinse and repeat. Offset in both directions, that sixteenth of an inch. That creates my path. Now I can get rid of the center line, delete the center line. Right? Now I gotta create my offset. Now this time I have one shape completely closed off. That's a completely closed vector now, that circle. And so is the inner circle. So I have one shape inside of another. When I do the offset, I only have to do outward and it'll do both automatically. I don't have to choose the word both. Okay, that'll create that. And I'm sticking with the 16th, even though this would look better probably with a 32nd inch spacing. I believe all you would probably agree with that. All right, let's trim. So what do we wanna do here? Uh, let's, I always do the circle first, then we'll clean up the inside. So I'm gonna do the right is gonna be a pass through. So let's clear between, remember my two inner lines is my path. Two inner lines is my path always, right? So that one's passing through, this one's passing under. So get rid of those corners. You're keeping your path. Get rid of that. Get rid of those corners. You're keeping your path. So over, under, right? Very simple. All right, now it's went over here, it's gotta go under on this side. So we're trimming vertically now. That path is cleared up. Trimming this. Get rid of that corner, get rid of that corner. There we go, right? Over, under. Bring that circle around. So we just went under, we gotta go over here. So clean that path up. I like cleaning the path up first because that lets me know where my unders are. Clean up those corners. There we go. Now it went over. It's got to go under here. Clear that path up. Get rid of that corner. Get rid of that corner. Looking good. Looking good. It's going under here. So now it goes over here. So clear out that over. Trim the under. Get rid of the corners, right? 
It went over here, it goes under here. All right, clear the path out. Sometimes clearing the path out helps you visualize which way it goes. All right, trim that. Let me get in here, trim that. Get rid of that line there and that line there. All right, our circle is complete now. Now, this arm went over, so it has to go under this one. This one went under, so it's got to go over, right? So it, it matches. It's perfect. This is what it's supposed to be. Under. Get rid of that corner. Okay. It went under here. Now it's got to go over here. All right. Come on around, it goes over, under, around, over, under, right? Clean that up. And there you go, okay? Hey, Steve, Bobby, thank you for that. I appreciate that super chat, man. I really, really appreciate you. Thank you, thank you. I really, really do. That really helps out, uh, uh, you know, with my time and 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 camera equipment and lighting and all that cool stuff. Keeps the videos free. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. Now, uh, Ken Singleton, uh, have a great night, Troy. Good evening. All right. So we have we just did we just created a very simple tri catcher using an arc right that's the three kind of pointed one now let's figure out the the four and the five pointed one same concept slightly different here we go and then we're gonna we're gonna do the four and then to make it really interesting i'm going to show you how to turn that four into a very intricate pattern we're going to do a full 10 by 10 with just this, what we're about to make next. And then we're gonna move over to the 3D modeling and show you how to create weaves in the Aspire software, okay? But the fundamentals that I've just taught you, create your, when you're V carving and pocketing, very important, you gotta have a closed vector, right? So this vector is closed, it's a closed vector. Your bit is carving in between those lines. So we have to create the path, however wide you want the path to be, the bit to cut, and then we create our offsets, which creates ultimately the trimming. You know, it creates the kind of that illusion here. And like I said, this path is only an eighth inch wide. This would have looked better, in my opinion, instead of having a 16th of an inch gap, a 32nd, if I would have cut that down in half, where it looks like the rope is just diving under the other rope, not such a big air gap there, you know? I think it would have just looked probably tighter, a little better. But it doesn't look bad as it is right now. Um, I just think it would look tighter. So my magic number, my offset for most stuff is 16th of an inch for the trim boundary, or half of that, 32nd. So depending on how wide my bands are and stuff like that. If my bands would have been a quarter inch wide, then the 16th would have been great. But they're only an eighth inch wide, so the 32nd would have been closer. Closer is better. All right, cool. Okay, so um, now let's get rid of this. Not get rid of it, we'll just move it off to the side with the others, right? All right, now we're gonna create Back to the arc tool. We're going to create four of them instead of the three, right? This one's a little bit funner and easier. Uh, not funner, but a little bit easier. A little bit easier to create. So we're going to start off with the arc. Again, I want a deep, you know, not overly deep, but I do want a deep arc. I want a deep arc. Okay. Um, and I'm going to center this left to right on the board. Here's the key to this one now. F flip it, we gotta flip it upside down. So we're gonna, 
I'm going to hit the letter H for horizontal, but we could also go to the mirror tool. I'm sorry, V for vertical. V for vertical. Uh, I could flip it vertically just by doing that, right? Or the letter H on the keyboard, uh, or V, V on the keyboard for vertical. Your choice. But that's fine. It's already flipped now. All right. Now I'm going to move this up. I like working off the center because it kind of gives me a, a pivot point and things like that. It's a known location when I'm creating all of these designs. And they all stem from this. All right. So I'm going to move this up away from my center point. Now, we don't want to be too far away and we don't want to be too close. You have to think about when there's four of these arcs wrapped around here, because we're doing the four pointing one, when there's four of these arcs wrapped around here, this center kind of gap, if you will, between them, uh, we don't want it too big because then the, then the arcs don't meet up and we don't want it too small. So I don't have a rule of thumb, whether it's an eighth of an inch or this or that or anything like that. I just, when I do my circular array, which you're about to see, I visually look at it and then I'll hit undo and redo it if I need it, if I want it something different, right? But this gap right now is fine. We'll use this gap to begin with. Now I'm going to use a cool tool over here on the left. Uh, at the bottom, we have our offset and layout tools. We're going to use the circular copy tool, circular copy, which means it copies an, a selected object in a circular pattern based on a certain degrees that we want to do uh, and based on a certain pivot point. Now, I said we're doing four. We're doing four number of items. And this pivot point, now over here in this little design, if you double click on the little dot in the middle, it changes these two boxes to zero, zero. And that's where we want our pivot point. We want to pivot around the center of our material. Okay, we want to pivot around the center. So we double click on the little dot over here and it puts that at center zero, zero. We are going 360 degrees around. So let's zoom out so you can see what happens when I do. Let's get a nice view there, there we go. All right, when I click copy, it's gonna create this pattern, right? The four points. Now, how wide my gap is and how close my gap is depending on depends on how close these points end up being, right? So let me just undo control Z. Imagine if I move this up higher and I did that circular array. They're not touching. There's no low, there's no overlap and all that. That's no good. We don't want that. We need to create that flower petal, that overlap. So we don't want to be too far away. If we're too close, if we're too close and we create that, we create a nice flower petal, right? But we have no gap for the weave because remember, this is our center line. This is our center line on our path. We still have to create the path from the center line, right? So if we're too close, there's no room for that inner vector for our path, right? So that's no good. Control Z. We want to, you know, have a certain spacing here that when we come around, you know, it creates that four pedal. And we still have enough room to create a path, if you will. Okay? Cool. Now, so there's our, that's the start, that's the four. Now, hold on, hold on, but wait, there's more. <laughs> Imagine if I was taking that pedal and I was going five times around, right? Creating five pedals. Now on this one, I'd want to come a little bit wider to bring these two ends closer together on the five and the six and the seven and the eight, right? So I can be a little further away from that center when I'm doing five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, right? That kind of thing, right? So the, 
if I undo that and I bring this up just a little bit, still rotating around that center, right? We're creating that five petals and I could do six petals and seven petals and eight petals and whatever, right? Cool. All right, we are doing four, four. All right, now, we're going to use our extend tool to close off the connection, but just remember the extend tool just kind of connects the lines, but it does not close them. So even though we are using the extend tool to click, click, to close or to, to, to connect, click, click, one, two, one, two. It's like, it's like dancing, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, right? Even though we use the extend tool, it did not join those lines. They are still individual vectors. Now, it's gonna be important that you remember when we do create the models version of this, the path, these lines have to be joined. But I don't want you thinking about that draw. I just want you to keep it in your mind, but don't, over, don't stress on it or anything like that. It just means that our path has to be one continuous joined path. I'll show you that in the next, we're almost there. Okay, we have now just created this four petals, right? Well, what happens if I rotate this? I'm gonna hit the number nine key to rotate at 45 degrees. Now we've got kind of almost like a decorative cross, right? It creates a whole new shape, right? That kind of thing, okay? Now, your depending on what your shape is going to be, depending on what your shape is gonna be and all, uh, will determine the, uh, um, which way you wanna orientate it. Sorry, got tongue tied there for a minute. Now, just like we did with the three petals, we have to create our path first. So we're gonna go both directions, inward and outward, on our lines. And I think I'm gonna stick with the 16th of an inch uh, inward, outward to create an eighth inch path but I am gonna do the 30 second offset this time. So offset both directions, a 16th of an inch to create that path, right? Next one, both directions, create that path. Next one, and next one. So it's not confusing visually to you, get rid of your center lines. Okay, get rid of them. Okay, and then our outside petals need to be joined. So extend, they need to be connected, not joined. Click, click to connect, right? And bear with me a second. My mouse is in, um, uh, my mouse got funky. All right, click, click to close that off. Click, 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 click. All right, then use our scissors to clean up these ends. Clean up your vectors before you do any other offsets or any of that stuff. Get things kind of, cl not closed, but attached and trimmed up. All right, now we have a path, a path. Do not delete your inner lines, but we have a path here, okay? An eighth inch wide path. Cool. Now, we need to create our offset. And remember, I'm gonna go a 32nd this time. So again, offset. And it's either outward or inward, depending on where the start point is and all that stuff. In this case, uh, we're gonna go outward and I'm gonna go a 32nd. Zero point zero three one two five. All right. Okay, cool beans. 
this one. Oh, wrong direction. Okay. This arc, I'm going inside of it on this one. Okay. Now, you see this right here? No good. No good. Right? We need... Uh, what what happened is or what what happened is is this vector is considered it's closed when I scissor trimmed the ends it closed it off and because it closed it off it's considering this little pedal right here like a closed vector right at that intersection you know and it created an offset inward like I wanted but I need that line to continue all the way around that path because that's my trimming vector. I can't just have a little closed vector there. That's that's no good. So I need to step back. I need to step back on the undo. That's undo. And I need to get rid of my the trimming that I did where I said clean up first. In this case, it wasn't a good idea. So I'm going to hit undo. And I need to keep my endpoints. I need to keep these vectors open, if you will. All right, one more time. Let's do this again. Offset outward a 30 second. Offset a 30 second. This line has to go inward. Wrong direction. I just said inward and I inward. And this line has to go outward. Nope. Dang gum it. There we go. Alright. So these are done. Now I gotta do this over here. And this down here. So this one outward. This one is also outward. Nope, dang it. That black node right there, that black point right there always throws me off, but that's, uh, I keep, I'm not in node editing mode. All right, uh, so it kept throwing me off. Okay, this. And this. Okay, now, because we needed those lines to continue straight across, you know, we needed those intersections, right? But now we clean up our paths. We connect and trim to clean up now that we have everything. So outside needs the extend tool, click, click. Inside. Uh, Needs our scissor tool. This gets trimmed. And that gets trimmed. Okay. Just on the ends. And then I'll do all the joining first. Extend tool. Click, click. And I keep saying the word join. I, I should say attach because they're not joined. I'll do the attaching first. Click, click, connecting, if you will, connecting lines. All right, but they're not joined. All right, so all my ends are kind of connected. Now I'll do my scissors and trim away all this and then these two inside. Okay. Trim away all the overhangs and the two inside. I want a nice clear path. All right, done. Now, in itself, by itself, it's a good looking shape. We could do a circle, right? We could do a circle and we could create, you know, something that looks like this. Imagine, if you will, if I rotate that, that's the same shape we have down here, just with a circle, right? Right. Okay. But... 
what I'm going to do is um, the from here I'm going to kind of create a little bit of a wall pattern. I'm taking, I'm kind of jumping you up a little bit. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do before I do this is I'm going to create my over under here so I don't have to deal with all that when I make the copies of this. Okay. All right. Let's do our trimming. All right, our path, depending on which way you want to go, I'm going to say that this goes over, right? Clear that highway. And that means this goes under. Trim that, get rid of those corners. Trim that, get rid of those corners. And see, with a 30-second offset on an eighth inch, much closer looks better. All right. This one went under, so now it goes over. And it's rinse and repeat. Oops, don't do that. It's rinse and repeat. And you just, I mean, you can, you should be able to see it. Like we're literally doing the same thing that we've been doing for the last couple of hours, just on different shapes. Okay. Over, under, right? So now this went under. This goes over. All right. And this goes under. Trim that away. And by the time you clean everything up, when you do your over under trimming, oops, don't, don't do that. When you do your over under trimming, notice that it gets rid of all the excess lines, right? All right, now let's imagine if you will, that I'm gonna, ro I'm gonna rotate this one time, so kind of like this cross here. Let's imagine, if you will, that uh, I'm going to make it smaller. You can scale it now, right? You can scale it in all kinds of stuff. Um, so I've got this kind of cool weave pattern happening here. Uh, I want to make. I want to make. Kind of a a wall pattern, if you will, right? And on this pattern, I want to use my offset or array copy tool under offset and layout, my array copy tool to create rows and columns. Rows and columns, okay? So here, if I went, let's let's just, I always do like two or three rows to start off with till I get the spacing and all that stuff right. Um, let's go three rows and three columns. now. If I had a gap in between these parts of zero, zero, right? And I created three rows and three columns, it would look like this, right? Almost like a, a grid of vines, if you will, okay? But visually, if I was going to do that, if I was going to do this kind of vine and everything, I would actually like this to come down. Let's say about half and half. And I would like to do my over under, my weave. You know what I mean? Kind of thing. You know, where one travels over, one travels under kind of deal. Now, in this case, I'm not doing any overlaps, but if I were, one thing you better be sure of is that I would uh, create my inside and outside offsets again, right, for my trim path. And it would be easy enough to do uh, because I'm only trimming, I need, a, I need a line out here and I need a line in here right? Not to confuse you, but if I did an offset, just so you know, if I did an offset 32nd of an inch in both directions, right? To create that, 
And I did the same thing on this one to create that. I have my trim lines. They look confusing, but they're, they're not. If I take my scissors, remember my in between my center lines, that's my path. So this one's gonna be going over. Get rid of that little triangle thing. That little triangle thing is trash. Uh, we wanna just delete that. This one too. But if I was trimming, remember my center lines are my path, so it's not as confusing as you think. So that went over. That means that this goes under. Get rid of the corners. Get rid of the corners. Remember, we're keeping just our path. Just our path, right? Nothing's changed from what we were doing this last couple hours. It just, it's closer. It's more closer, tighter, and that kind of thing. All right, so that went under. This one's going over. And this one's going under. Get rid of the corners. Get rid of the corners. Right? So if I was doing this, and then this offset is trash, this line right here, just get rid of that. Right? Now, big gap. And I want to know why my gap was so big. Uh... It just looks big, but anyway, it's fine. But so if I were connecting these, that's how I would do that, right? You know, but I don't want to connect these. That, that's not the whole point of this. I want to create a nice wall. I've already done all the trimming. I've got this nice little uh, kind of cross, if you will, pattern. I don't want to loop these together, which I could, right? I would do that on all of them, however many there were. Whew, what a nightmare that would be, right? No, not really. It's just a lot of trimming. And everything, but I want to undo this because that's not what that's not what my goal is here. I want to undo that. I want to put this back up. What my goal is, oops, what my goal is, is I want every other line to be shifted. right and I want it to be down to where the intersections connect here with a small small gap right that's the goal that I want that's the end game what I want from this single shape that's what I want everything to be that's what my when my pattern this imagine this full across the board. That's what it's going to look like. It looks like a bunch of circles now, right? Well, basically, let me delete all of this except for my pattern. When I'm using the array tool, ladies and gentlemen, we have we have our spacing, you know, that spaces are X and Y, but we also have displacement, which shifts a row or column, whether we're shifting on the X or we're shifting on the Y, right? Up or down. So that every other row, it always shifts every other row for that displacement, every other row, I want it shifted to the right by a, let me see if it's here, half of, half the distance of one of these. And if you look up here, my size of my selected object, the size is up at the top, 1.58599. 1.8599 if you can see that, okay? So I'm gonna be shifting when I do my displacement by half of that number, okay? But my gap, I want these objects, these objects, I want them to be touching. Okay, when it when it creates these the, the the left to right the side by side, I want them touching. Now, in order to get them to touch, 
in the array tool, we cannot use the gap. We can't use the gap. The gap is the space from the right side to the left side. You would think that we could. We actually have to use the offset in this scenario. We have to use the offset, which is from the left side of one shape to the left side of another, the next one. In this case, it is the size, the offset is the size of one of our stars. So if I come down here and I put 1.8599, that's the size of my X there, okay? And I do 1.8599 here, and I create that copy, all of the points are going to touch, right? Great, good, all that good stuff. But I don't want them touching on the top. Remember, I want it down here. I want it touching down here. So my X is correct. I want the tips left to right touching. But here, I need the offset to be half the shape because I need them. I need that whole second row to shift down by half the shape. I want it to shift down. Okay. So I'm going to take that 1.5899 on my Y and I'm going to divide that by 2. Okay. So now it creates this. Okay. And now they're overlapping each other. Well, that's because I don't have the displacement in. I'm just doing this little increment so you can see. So that's, that's what happened now. By doing that Y as half, it's brought those rows down by half the shape. They're stacked on top of each other by half the shape. Now I need to shift every other row by half. So let me undo, Control-Z, always starting with the one. I need to displace the X, left to right is your X axis, I need to displace this by half the shape. So that 9, 2, I'm sorry, 0 0.925, or 92995, which is the same number as this, right? Because that's half, right? Now when I create my array, it creates that pattern. Don't let the circles confuse you. There's one shape, there's the other. It's been shifted over and down to create that pattern, right? Let's do this, undo. Let's do more rows and columns now because we've got to fill up our area. So I'm going to go 9 and 9. Uh, let's go 8 and 8. 8 and 8. Okay. 8, 9, 10. And I really only need... All right, let's undo that. I only really need, I need, uh, let's go 11 rows and let's, we only, on the columns, we don't need that many because they're touching edge to edge. So let's go six. Good enough. All right. You with me, you with me? All right, Brooks, thank you very much. Appreciate you. Thanks again for that uh, super chat. Now, I want to center these onto the board. Align center. Right? And I'm going to create a, 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 a I want to create a uh, border. Right? I want to create a border. So I'm going to take a rectangle. That rectangle is going to, the center point of that rectangle is going to be at zero, zero. And I want a three quarter inch border all the way around. So three quarters on one side, three quarters on the other. That's an inch and a half. I'm going to take my width, the letter W, or I could use the letter X in these calculation edit boxes here. And I'm going to subtract an inch and a half from that. I'm going to take my height, H or the Y axis, you can use either letter, and subtract an inch and a half from that. And I'm going to click create to create that rectangular border. Can you 
Can you see that border there? Three quarters of an inch in from all four sides. That's gonna be my trim boundary, ladies and gentlemen. All right, I'm gonna select all of these vectors, hold the shift key down and turn off the rectangular border, reselect the rectangular border so it's the last thing that you select, trim using the trim tool, not the interactive trim, which is your scissors, but the regular trim tool. Looks like the barber pole icon right here. And we're gonna clear everything outside of that boundary away. We're gonna get rid of everything outside of that boundary. Hit clear. Okay. Give it just a moment because there's some intersections and things where my border is and stuff. There's some intersections and things that it's dealing with that it's gotta to calculate to trim, so it's gonna take a few seconds. It's collecting the data. It's looking at everything. It's progressing. But the I can't move it while it's doing it, but the what it's trying to figure out is how to redraw these lines over here where they trim border and the line are kind of like almost on top of each other, right? There's no real, there's no real clear cut path, if you will. So it's taking just a second to collect the vector data. We're 38% calculated. While that's calculating, uh, how do you think, what do you think guys so far uh, on this? Cause we're gonna, we're gonna spend the last 20 or 30 minutes doing models. You think, whoa, do we have enough time for that? Yes, we absolutely do. All the hard work is creating the vectors, the shapes and everything, creating the models. We're gonna be using a single line sweep. So our center lines are gonna be important this time. And it's actually pretty quick and easy. You're gonna be surprised when you see just how easy it is. All right. And then you can start, uh, you can start making model borders and stuff for your nice creative picture projects and things. So stick with me. We're gonna be here just for just a little bit longer. I know you're tired, your mind is swollen, but I hope you saw that once we created the path, you know, the, the two lines that the router bit is cutting between the path, and then we created the offset, those little offsets, those were our trims, right? Big Daddy Fish, thank you very much. I appreciate you, man. All right. Um, Hey, Kenneth and Corbin, thanks for watching. If this is your first time, I appreciate you. And, uh, you know, Big Daddy, always appreciate you, man. Um, the, uh, when it comes to the uh, trimming, that over under, just follow it along. Do, don't try to get ahead of yourself. Just stay in one area this went over, that went under, you know, which one's trimming and trim up. And uh, it gets rid of all those excess lines that we created as you're trimming and it's perfect. It's and, and so no matter how intricate your pattern is, I love going online to and searching Celtic web patterns, right? And looking at different images I don't have to trace that image. I can draw that image now. I know how to. I know how to do the trimming. Here's my path, the white area, and the black area is that little 16th of an inch offset, right? Where it trims to give that illusion that white is going under this one, right? So I like looking at these different patterns and I can now recreate these patterns. Of course, I could trace the image and, and you know, it'd be done with it and all that, but I can now draw them and do my over under and create the same thing. And I'm, you know, I, I, I use this for inspiration, like the little, the wall art patterns, right? What looks, can you see that? Let me see here, hold on a second. I'm gonna open this up in a new tab. I'm gonna open this tab up and I'm gonna zoom into this, right? 
There's our circles, right? But if, let's break it down. There's our four. Can you see that? There's our four little arcs. One, two, three, four. And they are offset and shifted over just like we just did. And so it looks like a bunch of these circles now, right? Because we literally just did that here. Looks like a bunch of circles now. And that's all it is, right? So I can now create all kinds of cool window pane patterns and, 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 and frames or things like that um, with this kind of background. Now I'm gonna really blow your mind in a minute when I say imagine this as, all right, you guys all know what stacked text is. Text on text, right? Well, imagine if I, instead of someone's last name being the back text, you know, and their first names being the front text, imagine if I have a sign where this was the raised kind of pattern in the background, and then my text was on top of that, stacked text. It doesn't have, they use the term stacked text, text on text, it's always text on text or stacked text, but it doesn't always have to be text. We're just stacking one thing on top of the other, creating those two different levels, and we could use shapes like this to create that pattern. Maybe next week we'll do, or in the next class we'll do text on text and things like that, and we'll do some patterns on our stack to show you, right? All right, don't wanna confuse the situation. Now, our trimming is done. I'm going to remove the rectangle, but I'm not gonna remove the rectangle. I'm gonna offset it. I'm gonna offset it the same width as my shapes, and they're an eighth of an inch, remember? So I'm gonna offset it outward, one eighth of an inch, 0.125, deleting the original, create sharp corners, select a new one. Boom, that creates that gap there. Why did I do that? Because if I'm doing this as a V carve, great, but if I'm doing it where I want it raised, then I need that border. So let's look at it as a V carve toolpath and as a raised carve toolpath, this pattern. Now this would probably look better with wider bands, right? Instead of the eighth inch, maybe quarter inch, you know, next time. All right, let's do it as a V carve toolpath. So a V carve toolpath, we're gonna turn off the border, just have this selected and we're gonna go no flat depth, okay, uh, let's close that. Let's do a V-carve toolpath laney, there we go. No flat depth, 60 degree V-bit, we're gonna calculate that toolpath. All right, I've got 45 open vectors, so some of my vectors were not closed. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was a reason why it was taking so long to trim, because some of them were open. Let's see what we've got going on here. Let's go to our join tool, okay? There are 225 closed vectors in that selection. I don't know what Vectric is thinking about. They are all closed. Let's right click, select all open vectors, and let's see if there are anything pink. I don't see anything pink. So I don't know what Vetric was talking about, but let's figure it out. Let's come over here. <laughs> Hold on, my mouse is acting up, there we go. All right, calculate, continue. 45 open vectors were identified in the selection. They're being ignored. I'm gonna click okay, because I wanna see what it's ignoring. Because there are no there are no open vectors there, but if they are, it's easy to fix. Okay, it's going to cut through the material. I want to see what it's cutting through. Okay, you see that big old hunk of mess down here? That's bad, right? We don't want that. And what that is is all down here and everything. Things went haywire. So, it's a simple fix. Let's delete this toolpath. It's a simple fix. Control Z to undo. Okay? Delete that. 
All right, come back to our pattern here. Now, what it's complaining about as far as the closed vectors and everything, or the, the this, uh, what it's complaining about is our tips are touching, right? So the overlaps and intersections, that's the first complaint. The second complaint, I'm gonna move this so I don't have to redraw it, I'm just gonna move it out of the way for a minute. The second complaint is that when it, that the vectors are open, no problem. I'm gonna go Control Z to undo all the way back to a single object here. And I'm gonna make sure that all my vectors are closed. They are, okay? There are no open vectors in this design. If I were to V-carve this as a single item, no warnings, no nothing, it carves just fine, okay? So they're closed, so that's, that's no problem. The problem comes when the tips are touching one another, okay? The four tips. All right, when it comes to modeling, doesn't matter, that doesn't matter, but when it comes to the V-carve, it's complaining. How do we fix that? In our array tool, our gap and our spacing and everything, we're just gonna add a little bit to it, right? So if one of my objects is 0.18599, and the other one's gonna come over that far, and that means it's gonna to be touching right on the end, you know, one object when it creates is gonna be right there, you know, 1899, 8599. I just wanna add a little bit to it so it doesn't touch, just a little bit. So I'm gonna make this 186 or I could go 187, whatever, because we're only talking 10 thousandths, or, you know, I'm sorry, one or two 10 hundredths of a thousandths, so it's insignificant, right? So I'll just make this, instead of 185, I'll make it 187, right? Now, let's bring this back to three and three, just so we can do this, just so you can see the little gap we've created, right? Now, since I've created that gap, right, I can now do my displacement, 0.93, to create my pattern, right, and if we zoom in, I'm off, I'm not centered, right? Remember, I have that gap in there. I'm not centered no more, okay? I have to shift it over to the center of my 0.187, the center of my 0.187. So my displacement is gonna be 1.87 divided by two equals, 935 instead of 93. So when I do that, it'll put it in the middle. In the middle. So now nothing's touching. So no complaints from the software there. Nothing is touching except for that right there. Oh, it's so barely touching. All right, it's so barely touching. The 9-3, that's my Y. The 9-3, I'm gonna make that 9-3-5. Put that little space there, all right? Cool beans. All right, undo that. We can now go back to our 11 rows, six columns, and click create, okay? I forgot to put the displacement in there. <laughs> Let's draw that again, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, 1.87 divided by two equals 
Okay. I can now center that on my board. Right? Cool beans. I can now put my border back in there. Got my border back in there and all that jazz. And I can do my trimming again. Sorry, that took us a whole, it took time away from us. It took time away from us. All right, let's select that border last and trim. All right, so um, <laughs> I'm glad they got a kick out of that. So first things first, the software, you know, anytime you have overlapping lines or intersection, the tool paths are gonna throw up a warning saying, hey, you have intersecting lines. If you have open vectors on pocket cuts and profile, or no, I'm sorry, not profile, pocket cuts and V-carves and inlays and things like that, it throws up a warning saying you have open vectors. They're unsuitable for this tool path, so they're gonna be ignored, right? Well, that's kind of what happened. And um, what we just did is we kind of stepped back, gave ourselves a little bit of spacing. It wasn't much, you can't really tell any difference in the pattern and all. Gave ourselves a little spacing, and um, uh, and then we're back to, you know, uh, trimming again. So it's calculating the trim data. It's trying to figure out how it needs to trim all this. And then we can move over to the last uh, 15, 20 minutes, uh, 30 minutes or whatever. Uh, we'll go 20 uh, on the models. I'm, I'm, I'm really anxious for that one. Here we go, here we go. Come on, come on. It's 67% done. And 76% uh, done. It's a climbing, it's a climbing. It's trying. So, ladies and gentlemen, give me uh, uh, give me an idea. What do you think so far? Are you, you learning anything? Is it are you, is this boring you? Are you enjoying it? Uh, is it kind of give you something to think about when you want to you know when you're looking at all these Celtic knots and it's like oh man, you know yeah I could trace the picture but also I could create my own patterns and stuff, fun stuff. All right. We're gonna take our rectangle border and offset it outward by an eighth of an inch. Deleting the original, there we go. All right, one more time, let's hold down our shift key. V-carve tool path, calculate. No warnings, wow, how does that work? All right, reset the preview and preview the visible tool path. Now, as a just a simple carving and all, it's not a whole lot, right? It doesn't I mean it's not it doesn't look like it's not it's not exciting and all that stuff. Um, but uh, as a pattern on a cutting board or something that might be you know epoxy filled or inlaid, right? A nice inlay pattern and all, then it's exciting, right? Well, now let's take it just a second. We're gonna we're gonna select all of the vectors, the border two, and do a V carve tool path. This time I am gonna set a flat depth of an eighth of an inch. And I'm gonna use a 60 degree V bit and I'm going to, I've got some wide areas in here um, and stuff. And um, uh, I wanna use a, an end mill to help clean that up. So I'm gonna go with a eighth of an inch end mill. I could go with a quarter probably on the 10 by 10 like this. But I'll go with an eighth, it's fine. I could go with both as well, too. Uh, I'm gonna calculate this tool path. And this is gonna create the reverse effect of what you just saw. It's gonna go, it's gonna, everything that was once carved down will now be raised, and everything that was raised will be carved down, right? All right, 
So we have this pattern where it's all raised. And if I were to paint this or add some epoxy fill to it, you know, what have you, whatever color you wanted it to be. But that's the opposite effect of that. All from a simple arc. All right, all right. So let's go, let's go over and uh, let's do some modeling. Now, if you don't have a spire, don't, don't leave. Stick around. This may kind of one day may think that, you know, that, oh, this, I, I need to get a spire and all that stuff and everything. Um, you don't need to get a spire. Nobody needs to get a spire. It's a want, not a need. Um, but uh, I want you to be able to see some of the features of it. And uh, we're going to be using kind of one feature, the, uh, the um, well, one main feature. But uh, stick around. Don't, don't leave. All right. Let's get out of here. Let's go ahead and I'm going to hit save. And before I get out of here, let me zoom out and let me kind of show you all of these patterns, right? So very simple patterns. Now this, this curve right here, these straight lines before they were trimmed, you know, and all that rectangle, right? A rectangle. And then that arc, that arc, the size of that arc was based on circles two circles. The outer circle created the outer part of the arc. The inner circle created the inner part of the arc. That's That created my pathway, that eighth inch, quarter inch, whatever, you know, that three eighths. Your offset, the size of your circles, that creates the pathway. And then your rectangles are connected to those, right? Circles, 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 circles. And then you create the weave pattern, just like you do our little offsets, our little 16th of an inch or 32nd, whatever you want that gap to be and everything. But that pattern started from circles and rectangles, simple circle and rectangle. The rectangle with the circles at the end. If I took this circle here, these two circles, hold down my control key and drag a copy down to here, Right, let me get it centered. Okay, that's all it is. Circles and then rectangles connecting one leg. This, one, this, this rectangle connects to this side of this circle and this side of that one. This rectangle connects to this side of this circle and this one connects to that one, that kind of thing. Every other one, very simple pattern. The, this shape here, you're actually gonna see me create this shape in the 3D model, okay? Very simple. Um, and uh, uh, to create that pattern, you're gonna see that in just a second. The hearts, it's a heart copied around four times, just like that was earlier, the arcs, right? Copied around four times and then rectangles connecting the legs of the hearts. And then you create your little offsets and your little trims. It's all just a matter of, and you can look, you can search Celtic knot pattern vectors on Google. You can look at the designs visually so you can see them visually and then you could draw your own, right? Or you could trace, you know, that kind of thing. But that's kind of what we're doing. All right, all right, let's get out of this. We're gonna open up a spire now. Kool-Aid, thank you very much. I appreciate you, Kool-Aid, I appreciate that. And uh, Mike Perry, Troy, everybody, thank you. I appreciate all of you for sticking around. Uh, the Super Chats really help out. Uh, I appreciate that so much. Thanks, Kool-Aid. But um, I appreciate all of you just for being here. Your views are important to me too. So don't think just because I get excited about the Super Chats that uh, um, that just it's, it puts money in my pocket, right? So who can't get excited about that? All right. Uh, we're going to... Um, close out of the Vetric software and I'll be darned if I didn't hit, I clicked on there and opened it right back up. And we're gonna go to the Aspire software. Ooh, look at all those crazy icons, holy moly. All right. Hey Rodney, thanks. Um, we're gonna open up Weave Models. 
just to show you some pattern, but I'm gonna, we're gonna create them from scratch, but I just wanna show you some visualization. I, I know you're visual folks, right? So I want you to vis be able to visualize and see the patterns and everything visually, okay? So look at this crazy pattern, right? Now, break it down, break it down. We literally just worked with this pattern. It's the four arcs, that one arc that was copied around four times. There's our four enclosures. When we turn it into a model, it looks like that, right? Cool beans. Okay, let's get that out of here. This one, this one is that same arc copied five times around, right? That kind of thing. All right, first of all, uh, we need to understand how the weave tool works. Now, it's not actually called the weave tool. In the Vetric Aspire software, we have model creating tools. We have model creating tools such as the create shape tool, the two rail sweep tool, the single line sweep tool, the spin or turn tool, uh, and then we have sculpting and stuff. Well, we are going to be drawing single lines, a path, and then we're gonna be creating a little profile shape, and we're gonna create a model to follow that single line. Now, the cool thing about the single line tool in Aspire is it has a feature called the weave over under, okay? The weave over under. It's grayed out right now because I don't have anything drawn or selected, but this cool tool has that feature. Now, to demonstrate this, we're gonna start with a simple basket weave, all right? And that all starts with a line. So I'm gonna take a line and I'm gonna draw a line from here to here. I don't care how long it is, I'm just gonna draw a line. I'm gonna center that line up and down on my board and I'm gonna create offsets. I'm going to create an offset. Now, the spacing between your line, you gotta remember this one now, this one's a little different. We are gonna be drawing a shape, a shape. So let's pretend just for Right now, let's pretend my shape is this little ellipse. And this ellipse is going to be a quarter, uh, yeah, quarter inch tall, and I'm gonna go 3 8 inch wide, 0. 0.375. <laughs> Let me try that again, 375. Zoom in, zoom in, zoom in to that ellipse. I'm gonna go into node editing and I'm gonna cut it in half. Cut the vector, go to this node cut the vector and delete the bottom half. So this, think of just like a little bead, if you will, like a little bead, the top part of a bead. That is my shape. Now imagine a bunch of these side by side, right? And then weaved and intersected and all. That space in between them is important. Now imagine that I have a center line, right? Imagine this shape is off a center line and I'm going from center to center when I'm spacing my lines apart. Hold on a second. I'm going from center to center when I'm spacing my lines apart to create this shape of this weave and all. That gap, that spacing for my offset for my individual lines, it's important, right? It's important. So, what I can do is a little bit of math. <gasps> Don't freak out. It's just a little bit. All right, let's get rid of this and let's get rid of this line. I'm going to keep that shape. All right, so my shape is 3 eighths of an inch wide. Remember that number. Now my offset, okay? I am going center to center. And I want a gap in between. So, if I was going center to center, right, 
from the center of one shape to the center of the other, if they were butt up next to each other, would be 3 eighths, right? Center to center would be 3 eighths. If they were button up next to each other, boom, 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 boom. Half and half is one, right? 3 eighths. But I want a small gap in between. So I'm going to take on my offset, I'm going to go my 3 eighths, but I'm going to add my gap in there. In this case, I'm going to go with, uh, I, want to, I want you to be able to see the weave, so I'm going to go with a gap of an eighth of an inch. Three-eighths plus an eighth is one-half. You guessed it, right? And I'll put that in there, but we'll hit the equal sign. That's one-half, and that's going to be my offset. So I'm going to offset my lines in one direction. Grab that center again, and I'm going to offset my lines in the other direction. Right? Now, I'm going to get rid of these outside three lines here and these outside three lines here, just so we have kind of a weave pattern in the middle. I'm going to select all of these and hit Control-C, Control-V, copy and paste. And then I'm going to hit my number zero key twice, one, two. I've just created a grid. Right now, my shape is going to imagine I'll turn it 90 degrees. Boom, boom. My shape is going to get extruded across these lines here. Okay, it's going to get extruded across these lines and across these lines, but every intersection it's going to be going over, under, over, under, over, under. It's going to do the weaving automatically based on the tool based on the tool. When I say the tool, I'm talking about the modeling tool. We're using the single line sweep tool and I got to select all of my grid lines and those are my selections. Okay. All my grid lines. So that's my drive rails. They're considered drive rails. The drive rails are the path that your shape is going to follow. Okay. And they're center lines. They're center lines. Now I am going to be using the vector cross section that I select, which is this guy. I'm going to select him. I want to create square corners on this, if there are any to be had. And I want to sweep it between the spans. I want to do a weave over under at the crossings. All the crossings do a weave. Okay. And the shape, I'm doing a scale shape and under over, how much of a percentage under am I going and how much of a percentage over, okay? So that we can understand that better for you, I'm going to do one line, okay? So we're gonna grab this center line here and any one of these other lines here, just those two lines. Those are our cross sections. I'm going to use this pattern and I'm going to apply this. Okay. Now, let's look at this in the 3D view. Okay. Now, when it talks about the percentage under or Z under or the percentage over, it's talking about on my shape that goes under, how much, uh, how, how, how much is that dip gonna be? Is it gonna be just coming down a quarter of an inch? Half an inch? Or, I'm sorry, 25%, 50%, not inches, sorry, uh, percentage. Uh, is it gonna go 60%, you know, that kind of thing, 10%? And my crossover, I cannot change any, I cannot go past 100%. Okay, uh, but I can change it lower, but the crossover can never go past 100 uh, and everything. But I'm going to do, I'm going to do 90% on the under and 10% on the over and I'm going to apply and I want you to see the change here. Okay, my shape is going 90% under the surface. There is only 10% of my surface over this shape, okay? 
So if I was making a cross or something, I'd want something like that, then I might be weaving under 10%. This, is, this represents of my overall shape. Let's turn it sideways. If from the bottom of this shape to the top of the shape was 100%, from the top down to here represents 10%. So I'm down, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm keeping 90% of my shape, right? That's 10%. If I went 10% here and I did apply, then it would squish this down and 90% down, I'm only going, I'm only going, I'm going under 90% of it. Only 10% of my shape is going under the other 90%, right? 40% under. Forty percent under. This is 40% of my shape. From the top down is 60%. That kind of thing, right? So I have found that on a weave, 50 and 100 is a great looking weave. Um, if I was doing other types of intersections, I would be higher on that. But I always, my Z over, personally for me, my Z over is always 100%. Um, if I change this, right? And I'm sorry, I cannot, I'm sorry, on the, uh, on my Z over, I can't go less than 100%, not more. I said I couldn't go more earlier, like five minutes back. Uh, I can't go less than 100%. But if I were to go over, right? 50 and 145 kind of thing. Um, it bulges, bulges this up. So I'm still, my shape went 50% under the normal shape, but I added 45% to the Z over, so it bulged it up really fat right there, right? I don't want my weaves to bulge. So, I have found that 100% and 50% is a good weave, okay? All right, hey Fred, thank you, thank you for coming. All right, I have found that 50% and 100% is a good weave. 100% of my shape keeping 100% of one shape, 50% of the other when it's going under. All right, now let's apply that to all of the lines. So select all of our lines. Sorry. I could have just cleared the rel instead of closing the tool. Uh, I'm gonna select all of the lines. That's my drive rails. I'm gonna select my profile. Now this profile, you can make it, you can put little beads in it. You can make this profile shape square. You can do any kind of shape that you want with it, okay? any kind of shape you want with it. I'll show you in just a minute when we do a square one. But uh, that's gonna be my drive route and I'm doing 50 and 100. 50 under, 100 on my over. Stay, stay, stay its full shape. I'm gonna apply this and at every intersection it's gonna weave over, under, over, under. Okay? So my spacing has left that little 16th of an inch uh, you know, gap that I added and all that to it, that little space and all. So let's look at our pattern in a 3D. Right? And there's our weave. Like a little weave basket kind of thing. Pretty cool, right? Pretty cool. Now, what would happen? Let's reset that. So that's the weave, right? Pretty cool. All right, what would happen if my line spacing here currently right now, let's uh, clear the rails. My line spacing from one line to the next, from one line to the next is a half inch. We, we, I should have remembered that from earlier, right? Half inch. I'm gonna take my shape here, I'm gonna make it a square. I'm gonna make it a square. Uh, it's gonna have a width of, 
a half inch, and I'm just going to go an eighth of an inch high. Okay. Let's take that over here. Okay. In node editing, I'm going to get rid of the bottom span. We never have the bottom span. Okay. Now, it doesn't matter what way your, your, your shape is facing. Doesn't matter which way your shape is facing. You could be going uh, this way, this way, this way. It doesn't matter. It's, it, uh, you know, which way you draw it doesn't matter. Uh, it's going to extrude it properly. It's going to turn it to the center line. Anyhow, so that's my center line. But for visual purposes, so you can visualize this, visualize this, I'm going to turn it sideways and I'm going to snap the center to that line there just so you can see that it's going to sweep that across that line, right? Okay. All right, so now I'm gonna I'm gonna actually uh, lessen up my lines. I don't need so many lines on this one. I want to go from my center line one, two, three. I'll get rid of these three. From my center line one, two, three. I'll get rid of these three. And on the weave here, from this center line, I want to keep. One, two, three, get rid of those. One, two, get rid of those. Now, I'm counting the center line as, oh, hold on, it went one too many. I'm counting the center line as one. One, two, three, one, two, three, on this one, on this one here, just to, so you can see the weave a little bit better. All right, now, Select my, go to the modeling tool, single rail sweep. My selection is currently the drive rails. My shape is gonna get swept with that 5100 and I'm gonna click apply. Now, you ever seen those really tight weaves where there's absolutely, I mean, it's just tight. There's no space in between. Well, because I did not create any spacing, my one inch space between my center lines and my one inch piece, there's no gap in between. Those, those weaves are right next to each other, right? So let's look at this, right? You see that weave pattern? And look here where the shape goes up to the full height you know, it went under 50% and it's building back up from that 50 to 100%. My ends are connected, right? So we have that shape. Now, this shape is an eighth of an inch tall, okay? So if I wanted to, if I wanted to, I could come in and draw a rectangle. And let's make sure that I am All right, I'm gonna do this a little bit mathematically. I wanna snap this rectangle to this line and this line, but I need to make it bigger by one inch. Uh, this is a half inch, sorry, I need to make it bigger by a half inch. Uh, a half inch, so I'm gonna size this up. I'm gonna change the height on it to 2.5 and that's going to guarantee that it's right there at the end where my model is right now I'm going to take that shape and I'm going to uh, mirror it create a mirror copy flip about job center flip it horizontally and then I'm going to rotate it uh, copy paste rotate it 
and this one's wider, right? So I'm gonna get my center on this line here and I need to make it bigger by, there's a half inch there, there's a half inch there, that's one inch, right? Size that up, make that an inch wider. So 3.5, oops. Well, the height didn't matter, that's fine. 3.5, perfect. And then I'm gonna snap that down here actually going to overlap it just a little bit overlap it there bring that to that now on this one i'm going to overlap it a little bit one two on this one i'm going to overlap it a little bit one two now those three shapes ladies and gentlemen if you're wondering where we're heading with this those three shapes we're going to use the create shape tool in the modeling create shape tool we're going to create a flat shape an eighth of an inch tall. We're gonna merge it with the existing model and we're gonna click apply. Now all I did is I extended that out, you know, a little bit longer and a little bit wider on the sides. So it kind of looks like a more of a cross kind of thing, right? So I have this cross here with this really cool weave in the middle of it, right? Now, of course, I could, I would reduce my strands down, you know, in my space between my center lines and all, make the cross a little bit more. It's really fat right now, right? You know, but um, imagine that carving with that tight weave pattern right there in the middle, right? Existing bamboo weave, just like Ronnie says, very exactly, right? All right, cool. You know, so that the concept of the weave over under it does it automatically so that's just basic lines right any kind of lines you create that over under that path those intersections and stuff now let's close this now let's get fancy with it I'm actually going to delete that weave so I don't build up my memory and cause a lot of buffering and stuff. All right. Oh. Let's start off with a fun and simple one, and then we'll get to the biz the big one. We're going to ultimately end up with this. I'm going to show you how to do that. All right. A fun and simple one for 3D model. Um, we're going to go back to the drawing tool. We're going to start with our arc. Arc. Click an arc here and and pull it up. I want it. I want a good, nice, thick arc. Now remember, but though, um, let me undo that. Um, this is a center line, right? It's, we're not doing the offsets and all that stuff, not with the models. We don't need to. We just need the center line. So nice big arc. That looks good. I'm going to align that to the center. Left to right. Now, I'm going to flip it vertically. I'm going to hit the letter V on the keyboard. Remember, we talked about that earlier. And... Um, if I were to rotate this four times around, remember what I said, you know, you don't want to be too far away. We'll go, we'll go something like that. I'm going to use that same circular tool, just like we, we did before circular array off the center four times around to create that pedal right there, right? I'm going to use the extend tool to connect the pedals. Now, if you don't want your pedals to be very long and you don't, because the model that gets created, you don't want like a, a if you don't want kind of a really pointy looking model, then you move that arc up a little bit more, right? Let me undo, 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 undo. You move that arc up 
a little bit more before you do your circular array off the center and that brings the things closer and you create you know when you do your little extend it you know shorter petals and all but it also thins up the gap in between so there's a little give and take there I don't want that give and take so I want mine down right about there and I'm gonna copy it around four times and I'm going to use my extend tool. Okay. Now, I mentioned this earlier. We'll see how much of you guys were paying attention. I said that when we were creating those offsets, when we were doing the 2D version of it, that we did not want to join these lines. We need to be able to create those offsets and not join the lines, but I also said, now when we do the models, it's important that we do join the lines. We need a path, think of a continuous line where the pen doesn't leave the paper, where we draw a continuous line where the ends meet together. So imagine if I was doing pen to paper, starting here, coming around to here, coming around to here, and then ending back up there, right? That path. We need that continuous path as a closed vector. So with the join tool, we're gonna select in order this vector first and then this one second. So it comes around and it connects and comes around to there, join. Now that we have that shape, we're gonna select this vector because it's gonna come around there to here, join. Select that shape and then this line last, so it comes around, join. Now, if I went into my, uh, my single rail sweep tool and I made that my selection, I want you to see the arrows. I wish you could see the arrows, which way they're pointing, but they are all pointing just like this was one continuous highway, you know, one way only. The arrows are literally pointing all the way like it's one continuous line, okay? So, very important. Now, I want to turn this 90 degrees. I want it up and down like this, okay? Now, I'm gonna take a circle and it's not gonna be the boring circle where it just kinda goes around all of it and everything. I'm gonna draw a circle Not that big, <laughs> not that big, not that big. I'm gonna draw a circle. Here. Now what I'm hoping is, I'm gonna, when I copy this circle around four times, that they intersect, the circles intersect right here in this middle space. You know, when I say the middle space, I'm talking about between my two flower petals, right? There's a middle space. I want this to intersect and kind of loop right here. Now, if I copy that around with my circular array tool from the center again, four times, they don't intersect. Okay, they don't intersect here. I don't want that. I want them to intersect. So, I'm going to take that line or that circle and I'm going to drop it down even more. I'm going to bring it closer to my center. I'm not, I didn't have to change the size of it. I just bringing it down closer towards my center so that when I rotate it around that center point, they intersect. Okay. I want the intersect, but I don't want the intersection to be below my point. I'm very picky, right? Very picky. So let's move it up just a little bit more. Right about there. Let's try that again. Beautiful. My intersection lands here, not below my petals. Okay. 
I'm going to take my scissors now and I'm going to trim to create that intersection. I'm going to trim to create that intersection on my circles. I'm only trimming the circles, guys and girls. And then I'm going to just delete those four excess lines. And so I've got kind of this flower, if you will. All right. Now for this, I'm going to my shape that I'm going to extrude. I'm going to uh, do a circle. And the circle is going to be um, Let's go 0.375. 0 0.375. And I'm going to cut it in half. Node editing. Cut the vector on the left side. Cut it on the right side. I'm creating kind of a rope bead. All right. That's my, that's my shape. This is my path. Every intersection is going to go over and under when I use my model tool with the weave. So my drive rails, my shape, again, I'm going to go 5100. I like it. I'm going to click apply. Okay. And then we'll go to the 3D view. Now, because my shape was 3 eighths of an inch, the, that 3 eighths, that sharp point on that 3 eighths, ugly, doesn't look good, right? Undo, control Z, close this tool. Okay, the shape here, it was, uh, the overlap was too far down. And when that shape was getting created, it was, you know, because this is real wide. This would need to be much bigger, scaled up much bigger for this 3 eighths of an inch bead. So I'm going to simply resize the bead. down to an eighth. If I were to scale this up much bigger, it would be, you know, fine. But I'm just gonna, scale, since I'm not scaling it up much bigger, I need to scale down my bead. Now an eighth probably is too small. Uh, let's cut it in half. Let's go 3 sixteenths. Let's go 3 sixteenths, not an eighth. So size 0.1875. There we go. All right, one more time, model. My path, that's my selection. My shape, apply. Better, better, better. Okay. And I'm okay with it blending right here, you know, where it connects and stuff. Um, but that's my weave pattern. Now, if I wanted that not to blend, that's simple enough. I can scale, hold the shift key down, and just scale this down just a little bit. And do it again. Okay, now that's enough of that shape. You see it, all that good stuff, right? So let's come in here. All right, I still, still because of that sharp point. Now, here's one way to really get rid of that sharp point, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, reset that fillet tool. Use your fillet tool. 
So the fillet tool, let's close that tool here. The fillet tool, I'm gonna go with a 16th of an inch, ah, 30 seconds, fine. But I'm gonna create a fillet and I'm gonna blunt that edge. Okay, I'm gonna blunt the edge and that way when I create that shape, oops, don't select your profile until you click on use selection for your rails. Then select your profile. So by blunting uh, that shape and everything, you know, it rounds it off. All right, cool beans. Now, what this, uh, a shape like this, you know, could look like and everything um, uh, as a pattern, you know, type of a pattern and all. Uh, I'm not gonna create it, I'm just gonna show it to you. Let me close this tool. Move this over here. I'm gonna take this pattern right here and Come on now. <laughs> Hold on a second. I'm gonna center that on the board. And in the 3D view, we'll just look at in the 3D view. So that pattern, using the array tool and stuff, you can create all kinds of cool wall art. So that's just that pattern repeated just like we did in you know earlier um, with the the uh, the copy array tool, right? All right, we are gonna do. I need your brains for ten more minutes. Ten more minutes and we're done. But the last part of this, ladies, if there's any ladies watching, this will be right up your alley, guys. If you had any sisters or mothers or nieces or nephews or any kind of female in your life, you should have paid attention to them because we're gonna be doing braiding. We're gonna create a braided rope border and we're gonna create the vectors for that braided rope border. And it's just like braiding hair. You're gonna see that in just a second. Let's go ahead first and all, first and foremost, we're going to duplicate or kind of create this pattern here. So it all starts from a simple arc. Just need your brains for just 10 more minutes. All right, here we go, our simple arc. Nice wide arc. I'm gonna align it left to right on the material. I'm gonna flip it upside down and I'm gonna move it up a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna copy that around four times. You just saw that two minutes ago, right? Where we did that earlier, okay? And I'm gonna close or attach or connect with the join tool. Okay, cool beans. Gonna close that path, remember, Roadway has got to, it's actually got to join this time. So with the join tool, we're going to connect this line to that line. Join it. We're going to connect this path to this line. Join it. We're going to connect this path to this line. Join it. Now I have a continuous path that's connected at the two ends and it's all the lines are going in the same direction. I have one start point and one end point, okay? All right, we're gonna take this and we're going to size it down a little bit. 
And I'm going to move this up here. Okay. Now, I'm going to create a circular array from my center point here. And I'm going to go smaller. I'm going to go a little bit smaller on this border. I'm going to create a circular array around. Uh, and I want them, when they connect on the ends, when it comes all the way around, I want an overlap on this original. Circular array wrapping around the center point of my board. I do not know how many copies it's going to take to get a good copy around, so I'm going to start off with 30. Okay, 30 looks okay here, but down at the bottom, it's really overlap more more so than a, more more so than not. Undo. Let's knock that down to 25. Okay, getting better. We have our overlap here, plenty of overlap here, but lots of double overlap here, which is fine. It, it can be, it can be, because it, it'll still create the weave and all. I'm gonna back undo. I'm gonna go 23 and I'm gonna call it a day. All right, 23. That's gonna be my, my border, if you will. Now, my shape is gonna be just a simple bead. This particular bead is an eighth inch tall, a quarter inch wide. How do I know that? Because it says it down at the bottom of the items uh, that I have selected, but I can also go to the size tool and I can see that here as well. Also, I drew it earlier. <laughs> it's a half circle, quarter inch wide, <coughs> eighth inch tall. All right, I'm gonna select this border and that's gonna be my drive rails. I'm gonna select the profile here. The profile is the shape that I'm drawing and I'm going to apply that to create that weave. Now, the cool thing about the weave is once you do one, you can do them all because it always creates the over under pattern at every intersection, okay? So it does the work for you. You're not doing it manually and everything. So if we go to our 3D view, you can see the overlaps here. Now, I am not a fan of the way the overlaps look here. Okay, I'm not a fan of the way that looks. So, not going to change much. I'm just going to hit reset. And I'm going to control Z back. I'm going to reduce my size a little bit. I'm going to do that circular array. And if I'm going to have it overlap at all, I just want it's always going to overlap wider, by the way. It's always going to overlap wider at the bottom than it is at the top. Keep that in mind. Uh, 23 was a little bit too much. 20 is almost perfect. I'm liking it. Let me see if lucky number 21 is going to give me exactly what I want. I'll stick with that. 21. All right, one more time. Let me take my little shape put down here. All right, we're gonna select my shapes. That's gonna be my selection. My shape and click apply. Now this is just the border. We gotta create the inside too, so don't forget about that. 
All right. And I'm good with that. I'm okay with that uh, because there's going to be an inside border that makes it solid. You won't see that. I just didn't like the little peaks that were earlier. You're going to see what I'm going to do here. All right. So that's that. All right. So that's that's this kind of almost like barbed wire, right? But that's my kind of my barbed wire border. But next, I'm going to draw a circle. Circle. Radiating from the center outward. We'll go there. Then another circle radiating in right about there. And then I'm going to take my original shape and hold it down the control key and make a copy of it down and put it back in the center. I'm going to make it bigger. And I'm going to create a copy. And a bit of overlap. And I'm going to mirror that to the other side. Now, I'm going to take my node editing and on this arc here at this center point, I'm going to cut the vector there and there on the right side. And I'm going to do the same thing on the center point, cut the vector on the left side. I'm going to delete these outside ones. And I'm going to draw a line. Well, actually, no, I'm sorry. That's a lie. I'm going to use my extend tool to extend this line to this circle and this line to this circle. This line to this circle and this line to this circle. And I'm going to use my scissors to trim that there to create kind of where this circle is coming around, looping, looping, and coming around, looping, looping, coming around. It's just kind of an, an infinity, if you will. All right, now my other circle I created here, my half inch size shape is, my bead is gonna get shaped around this. I'll determine if this needs to go out wider or not, but I think that's good. And we're going to now take and select that circle and all of this stuff here in the middle. That's going to be my drive rails again, my selection. My little shape there is going to be the shape. And I'm going to apply. That's a lie. That's a lie. Let me turn off, let me clear the rails. This one is not gonna be selected right now. Just the inner stuff first. That's my selection first and then this shape and apply. Okay. Because that single line is not a weave. There's no weave, there's no intersections there. Okay, so that's that. And then this one, the weave isn't gonna matter. I'm still gonna use it as a center rail, but uh, we're going to select standby. Oh, you son of a gun. Always click apply. Always click apply. 
One more time, sorry. Do, 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 do. Beautiful. All right, start a new component, ladies and gentlemen. That's the button that we were looking for. Start a new component. Now I'm gonna select this. I'm gonna use that as my drive rail. I'm gonna select this as my pattern. I'm gonna turn off the weave because there isn't one. And this one is gonna merge, merge with the other model, not add to it. It's gonna merge, apply. So that should go around and fill that in. Perfect. All right. So now it's ugly, but you get the idea, right? Okay. Now, if my lines were thinner, thinner and not so bulgy and everything, and I'm only working on a small 10 by 10 area, this shape could very much look like this shape. Much thinner and a little bit more intricate. Now where this leads to and everything, you know, um, if I were doing this as a uh, 3D carving, um, let's preview. If I were doing this as a 3D carving, like a piece of wall art or something like that. Um, you know, it could be the top of a jewelry box. It could be the side panels of a box, that kind of thing, right? So that is all, all I've done here is I've taken this design and I've created a 3D model toolpath, 3D finished toolpath. All right, now, what I'd like to do is I'd like to end this tonight with creating a braided rope border because that's kind of something that you might use a lot and all. And I want to teach you how to do a braided rope border. Ladies, you'll get a kick out of this. Guys, pay close attention if you've never braided someone's hair. <laughs> all right, let me see. We have a question really quickly. Um, Robert, Ra Rodney Roberts, last week I had to reteach myself this on some cabinets I'm building. Easy to forget what to do, what does what. Exactly, cool. Um, Big Day Fish, don't forget to hit the like button. Hey, yes, don't forget to hit the like button if you're liking this. Uh, great for making items that uh, match existing bamboo weave. We saw that already. Is it possible to add some text or clip art on those weaves, Laney? Yes, it is. Uh, you can, um, if your weaves are wide enough and everything, you can do V-carving text on them and all uh, to create you know, uh, all kinds of uh, fun uh, patterns and stuff. You sure can. Um, let's see here. There. Uh, love how you faded into it. Yeah. Let's see here. Uh, hello, Lainey from Perth, Western Australia. Hey, Lynn. Thanks for jumping in from Australia. What size bit uh, would you use on this? If I was doing the models, an eighth inch tapered ball nose, if it was really intricate, then I'd drop down to a sixteenth inch tapered ball nose. Usually that's enough uh, for this. Uh, very cool. I downloaded the Trial of Aspire now. I have something to play around with and learn. Yeah, there you go. Uh, can you do a video of making a Jesus Thorn Halo? Yeah, I could do that. I could do that. Yep, probably so. Yeah, Kool-Aid, I could do that. Um, but uh, yeah, Troy, very cool. All right. <laughs> Let's get ready to create some braids. Okay. Now, for you guys that are in, that, that, that really need to be visual on this, I'm gonna pop open a picture. Okay. Uh, let's see here. All right, 
Now, when we are braiding hair or rope or anything, we can do a two-stranded braid, very simple two-stranded braid, a three-stranded, which is your most common. Okay, that's your most common. Uh, four strands or even up to, you know, five or kind of a seven strand, you know. Uh, you can just keep continuing adding to this. Now, how these lines are drawn in the software is important. And we're gonna lay out a grid using layout lines to help us, all right, to draw our lines. This is one continuous line. This is one continuous line. Where line two is, by the time it's done, we'll end at line one and that kind of thing, you know? Um, to simplify it, uh, we can, you know, look at the, we're gonna be doing a simple three strand braid on this. So this is kind of the pattern that we're following. So line three will end up at line two. Line one is our main line, it'll end up at three. And then line two will end up at one, right? That'll be just a simple braid. That's how you would braid someone's hair too, by the way. So for you visual guys and girls that needed to see that, that's what we're doing, okay? Don't panic, stay with me now, stay with me on this. This is the last, this is the wrap, okay? Now, I want to end up with a half inch wide border. It's very important how wide my grid is with a half inch wide border. This grid of lines here, and I'll show you how to make these lines. This grid spacing, these lines are an eighth of an inch apart one eighth of an inch apart. Now, how did we create these grids? Well, I'm gonna come over here and delete all of these. We're gonna start off with one grid line. We're gonna drag it from the ruler, hold down your left mouse button, and drag that grid line, get grid line out and snap it to the edge of our board. From our top ruler, hold down your left mouse button and drag a guide line and snap it to the top edge of your board. Now this board happens to be 10 inches by 10 inches square. I am going to do eighth inch spacing, so I need 80 grid lines to get across that 10 inches. Right click on the grid line, and I'm gonna create a relative guide, a parallel guide. Now if I don't know, if I don't know what my spacing should be or how many I need or any of that stuff, I can do the math inside this little box if I wanted to, right? I could say 10 inches divided by an eighth of an inch equals, and it tells me I need 80 lines, right? So that's the number of guides I need, 80. The position, the spacing is gonna be an eighth of an inch. Create the guides. Okay, same thing with the vertical or the horizontal guideline going down. We are going down, so it's a negative number, negative an eighth of an inch going down. Create the guides. Now, we're gonna be zoomed in and focused on this here. Uh, we're not gonna be way out here where it's all like, woo, what are we looking at? We're gonna be kind of up close and personal. Now, I'm going to start in, my, I want my border, the outside edge of my border, imagine if I drew a rectangle. I want the outside of the edge of my border to be on this guideline here, and then coming in, and I want it being a half inch wide. So, one eighth, quarter, three eighths, half, right? That is my, hopefully my ultimate goal that I end up with close to a half inch wide border. That's, that's what I'm looking for. Okay. Now that's going to be, um, I have one, two, three, four, five lines, but I'm only going to be using four starting in this one. One, 
two, three, four. I'm going to number them for you. I'm going to number them for you. So let's open up our text box. And we're going to go number one, two, three, four. All right. I'm going to break that text block into lines and my this is what's going to throw you off. All right, remember I'm starting I'm starting here on this line, okay? That first line for me at the top is going to be line 3, okay? So line 3. Let's get it centered on the line. There we go. That's line 3. All right? Line 4 would be this line, but we're going to skip it. We're not going to use four. We're going to just do one and two. One goes there. And two goes here. Okay. All right. I want these numbers to be all even, so let me get them centered there we go now just to do a short run a short run all right down here I'm gonna take these lines okay these numbers let me select the numbers and I'm gonna copy them down uh. And we'll just go to, we'll go to here for right now. All right, they stay the same, nothing changes. Okay, and I'll be darn, hold your control key down when you're doing that stuff. When you're dragging copies, hold your control key down. All right, now the lines are the, the line numbers are the same three, one, and two on both ends. All right. Four we don't use, four gets skipped. So this would be four technically, but it gets skipped. We don't use it. And when we are braiding, okay, we'll start off with, just to make it easy, we'll start off with line three here, okay? Line three, when it's all said and done, it's gonna end at line two. Line one, when it's all said and done, you'll see when it act, we start actually drawing it, you'll see it actually starts coming together. And you're like, oh, I see where it's actually gonna naturally land, right? But line one, when it's all said and done, it's gonna end up at line three. And then line two, when it's all said and done, is gonna end up at line one, okay? I know that sounds confusing, but trust me, it's not. We're going on the diagonal, ladies and gentlemen. Think about 45 degree lines, okay? So, I'm gonna start here. When I click at this intersection, okay? When I click at this intersection, that's my starting point. I'm gonna be drawing diagonal lines. Now, I'm gonna go, three is gonna go all the way to two, all the way to two here, diagonally click. It's going to go all the way back diagonally to three. Click. It's going to go all the way back to two diagonally on the 45. You just go back and forth from one extent to the other at a 45 and land on your lines. 45. All right. Keep going. 45. That's not 45. That's 45. 45 degree angle. Boom. 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 Okay. And three, when it's all said and done, should end at two space bar to finish okay 45 degree lines all the way down 
extreme. You go from three to two, two to three, three to two, 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 two to three, three to two, two to three, all the way to two, and it should end there. Okay? That's the first strand of hair when you're braiding your little granddaughter's hair or whatever. Uh, you have three strands, okay? One in the middle, and then this. All right, the middle one is number one. Three is the one in this hand, two is the one in this hand. All right, cool. All right, now, number one is going to go to three diagonally first. It's going to cross over the three line diagonally, and it, and it stops at line three, okay? You don't go past your lines. You know, we're only using, we, we stay within our lines, okay? So one crosses over. Now, I'm going to stop one right there just for a second. Two, you would think that two is going to start up here. Two actually comes down here, and it crosses over three also. So two and one, they both at some point in time, they cross over. Just want to, I'm, I don't want to confuse you, but this is the only line ever that starts one row down when you're doing a three row braid. And it's all because this is gonna be turning a corner. It's gonna be turning a corner and all. But anyway, let's continue with one. Let's not get you too, too, too riled up here. All right, our line, diagonal to three, okay? It is gonna now go to the full extreme, all the way to two, 45 degrees, it ends, bam. Full extreme, all the way to three again. Bam. Full extreme, all the way to two again. Bam. It always, all of them always end up going to the full extremes. Okay, where they start and how short the start is, is one thing, but they all end up going to the two outside lines. Okay, very important. All right, so 45 degrees. Bam, 45 degrees, bam, 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 right? Now, you see my mistake right here, okay? My mistake, let me finish this up really quickly. My mistake is this line, line three that I did first, I went past the line. I went past the line. I went past the line. So I need to node edit that. Bear with me a second. This is supposed to be over here. Okay. On line three. And it's supposed to be up here. Oh, oh, didn't want to do that. Hold on a minute. All right, let me fix myself, ladies and gentlemen. Two, three, two, three, two, three, two. Three, two. This one overshot you, bad boy. You need to be up there. And you need to be up here. Okay. So don't go outside your lines. I caught that luckily. That would have screwed the whole thing up and I'd been like, wait, it worked before, what happened, you know? But don't go past your lines. I went past the line and this goes here. Make sure it's 45 degrees, okay? 45 degrees. If I were to continue this on, to three, when it ends up, we always end on two, okay? Now I'll move my numbers down to the end of that line, okay? That's where we're at. One more time, number one crosses over, number three comes 45. Make sure we are on that 45 degrees. Do not venture off your 45 degrees. That was my problem a moment ago. Your degrees, when you're drawing your lines, it shows 
it shows on the cursor it shows that you're at 45 degrees okay Forty-five, back and forth from one extreme to the other. Now, line one, when it's all said and done, ends at line three. Now, if I were to continue on, if I were to keep this up, I just need to make sure that when it's all said and done, I end on line three and make sure that you don't do exactly what I just did there. Do not do what I just did there. You make sure you're at your 45 degrees, okay? But regardless, if this one continues or whatever, you always end on line three, okay? Now, for ease of sake, I'm gonna stop here and I'm going to delete this and this. Okay, I'm gonna stop there. My last line, line number two, ladies and gentlemen, is not gonna start up here. It's gonna start one row down and we're gonna cross over to line three all the way to the full extreme. Back to line two, full extreme. Back to line three, Rinse and repeat at that 45 degree angle. 45 degree angle. We are braiding hair, ladies and gentlemen. We are braiding hair. Now, the pattern is pretty much kind of consistent whether you're doing three strands, four strands, five strands. It just gets a little bit more. There's more involved, right? There's more, there's more involved, involved. almost there now when this is all said and done this will end okay line three will end 45 degrees it'll end at line one so I'm gonna end it there okay and of course if we if we continued it on if I were to have continued it on I would have just made sure that when I went to here that when I came back, I stopped there, right? Either one, I end at one, okay? But I wanna stop up here. It's important for me. All right, that is our path. That's our path. Now, now we're gonna create our shape. I'm gonna do an ellipse. This ellipse my grid spacing is one eighth of an inch, right? One eighth of an inch. So I'm going to go point one, two, five. And I'm going to go a sixteenth of an inch tall. Okay. I'm going to cut it in half. Cut the vector and cut the vector. Now, most important, since this, uh, since this is traveling on a 45, okay, I'm gonna rotate this shape one time. I'm gonna hit the letter zero to rotate it one time. And I'm gonna scale this up. I'm gonna scale this up to where, if I were to scale this, where it's about the same width as a diagonal on my one inch squares, my one inch grid. But I don't wanna be the full diagonal. I wanna be just under, cause I need some air space between the braids, right? So I am gonna size this back down. I'm gonna hold the shift key this time. And I'm gonna size it down just a little bit shy of being the full diagonal okay all right let me see how many people went holy cow question mark see above comments you are off three to two last line 
Hold on a second. Let me see here. Uh, Laney, are you going to show how to do those braids or share the file? Yes, I'm going to show you. I'm showing you right now, Fred, how to do the braids. Um, you have to have a spire. Uh, gotcha, Laney. Thanks. Great video lesson tonight. Let's see here. If you have, uh, if you have not hit the like button, thanks, Fred. I appreciate that. Hit the like button, everybody, please. Uh, you're off on the last one. I think you went one line past number three. You're off on the last line. Now, are you guys talking about where I screwed up and went past the line, but I've caught it and I fixed it? Let me know because I'm just now reading the comments. JR and Fred, uh, is that when I went past the third line and I caught it and fixed it? Let me know. JR and Fred. All right, because I should be good now. I should have a nice braid right there. Okay, cool. All right. Same toolpath we've been using, our center rail toolpath, one rail sweep. We're going to, I'm going to turn off the grid line for a minute. I'm going to select my pass. That's going to be my drive rails. All right, I'm going to select my shape. I'm going to do the weave. I'm going to do 5100 like I have all the time. And I'm going to click apply. Oh, let's go and look at our braid. Right? All right. So that's our braid. Now that's sharp corners. I don't want sharp corners. I want, I want smooth corners. All right, so we're gonna fix that. Reset. Close the tool. All right, now Really quickly, before I fix the corners, I want to show you how to extend this all the way around kind of thing. I'm going to select my three lines. Control C to Control V to copy. Okay. I'm going to hit the number zero key to turn them counterclockwise. All right. And then I'm going to come over here. Let's zoom into this. I'm going to come over here. And I'm gonna bring my, you know, my lines in and stuff. Okay. I'm gonna bring my lines in and things. And my um my two. One is the short one and three is that. They're going to connect. Now, I have overlaps here that I don't want. Okay, but I wanna continue that corner and everything. I actually wanna back up one. Give me just a second. This was line, where's my short one? Uh, yeah, this was line one. So one will connect to two. One will connect to two. Two to one. Helps if you rotate it the right way. Uh, Jesus. Okay. So on my lines, um, let me turn this back normal, straight up and down, right? So this is this is this was not this is straight up and down. So three, two, one. <laughs> I 
Three, two, one, all right? So that uh, I was trying to connect the wrong end. Okay, when I rotate this, I'm gonna rotate it counterclockwise. So it flips up like that. So this end and this end connect. Now, my lines, when they uh, intersect here and all, they, um, they connect like this where I have two uprights coming up like that. Now I got overlaps here that I got to get rid of. They're gonna they're gonna flag that for overlaps and everything. But I need these two uprights right here, and I'll show you what happens with those in two seconds. Let me turn my grid back on, so I can move everything accordingly. Okay, and let me draw my let's get that shape out of there so that doesn't confuse you let me draw my line there that gets connected from here to there and to there okay let me turn the grid back off all right so that's our corner now i have lines that overlap this line continues on if i go into node editing mode this line goes all the way to here. I need to have it not, you know, not intersect like that. It's gotta be kind of a continuous path and all. And on this line, if I pull this up, there's already a line there. I need it to join to the end of that line. So this node actually gets pulled back and snapped to there so that when I join this and this, join, it's only two vectors, one joint. So now that's one continuous line. This line, if I go into node editing mode, this line actually comes up here, right? And I don't need that to come up there, so I can delete that span. This, I need to connect right here. So it goes there. That way when I select this vector and this vector, I have two vectors selected and I can join them as one line, okay? Now this vector and this vector join together with this shape to create one continuous line, okay? Now, I no longer need that. And I no longer need, I can cut some of this off Uh, let's not cut, let's delete spans. I wanna keep the three ends open. Delete. Delete span. Delete span. Okay, I want the three lines open like that. Let's delete. Span. Oh. One, two, three. Okay. I just, it just, oh, I don't do that. Um, it just gives it a, I just want to end it like that, just a cleaner look. Now, Here's the key, I want rounded. This is it guys and girls, this is it. I want rounded, uh, a rounded rope, not square, okay? Now I'm gonna take a, a uh, not a guideline, I'm gonna take a regular line and I'm gonna draw a line straight across here and I'm gonna draw a line straight down here just to kind of represent like an outside, you know, path, right? Well, oops. 
Um, when I create a fillet on each of these corners here, I'm just going to do a simple round over, and it's going to be three sixteen, uh, three ah, one thirty second inch fillet, just a one thirty second inch fillet. Okay, so on each of these corners, I'm going to do this one thirty second inch fillet all the way down. And you could go a 16th inch. I mean, it just depends on how blunt or how round you want it. For the size of my bead, this is what I want. And on this side too, all the corners, put your mouse on the corner and click. All right, down this path, same thing. And it, it is rounding it off. It looks square, but it's not. It's rounding it off. So all the way down. When the model gets created, it just sweeps better when it's rounded. All the way up. We're almost there. Creating the braid was the hard part. Touching it up is the easy part. Okay. Now, the reason why I have these two lines drawn is because I want this ending corner to end kind of at the same height as these lines. So I'm going to take this line now and move that down to here. And I'm going to take this line and move it to here. And that gives me a trim path. And then I can use my fillet tool and put the fillet there as well. I'm going to do it there and there also on those corners. All right, let's braid this bad boy. So let's go to our model tool. Let's go here. Let's select our pass. That's our drive rails. Let's select our shape and click apply. Okay, and there is our braided border. All right. Now, let's say that I would have went half and half, and you know, all you know, uh, like all the way to the halfway mark. If I would have went the halfway mark, I could have you know continued that on, and I could have copied it around four times to create the entire square. I didn't go, I just, you know, wanted to kind of, you know, we're already at 11 o'clock, we need to get off here, but uh, I'm just gonna mirror this, if you will. And I'm gonna take my braid, I'm gonna put it on a different level for a minute, insert new level. And I'm going to mirror that by flipping it, create a mirror copy, flipping it to the right. I will flip it down. And I'll flip it to the left. Okay. So now I have four components. Currently, right now, they are being added to one another. So we have what's called add, where it drapes over, merge, where it blends together, subtract, where it takes away from. These are all currently set to add mode. So if I were to take these two models, this and this, and I were to move them over, and I'm not going to move them with my arrow keys. I'm going to drag it with the mouse. If I were to move them over, 
Uh, trying to keep my center line intact there, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I moved my center line. Hold on a minute. Let me undo. Undo. Okay, one more time. If I were to select those two models, I'm going to hold the alternate key down so that way when I move it, it does not shift up or down. <laughs> okay? So I can bring this in to... There looks good. Now, if I look at this in the 3D view, with it being an add, where these things come together, it creates this kind of stiff overlay, right? Or overlay, it's real funky looking. I need these two objects to be changed, their combined mode to be changed to a merge. I need them to merge with one another. When they merge with one another, they will blend and we, our ends still aren't together here, right? So I'm gonna now split the view so I can see this in double as I'm doing it. But I'm now going to use my arrow keys and I'm going to just bump it over. Until I get past the and it's got to regenerate the model every time I bump it over. That's why I don't like doing it this way. But um, here, let me uh, let me move it over again. Uh, hold that alternate key to keep it, you know, so it doesn't uh, shift. Okay. All right, and when all is said and done, and everything, the merge. Uh, not quite blending as well as I would like. Oh. <laughs> That's because my first component is still set to add. Merge. We're working on it. We're working on it. Okay. And this one. Merge. All right. Now I need to find that merge point where it Give me a moment, ladies and gentlemen. I've never done this with the braid, so bear with me. I, 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 Rosetta. Wasn't it? 
I think it's not gonna it's not gonna blend properly because this is raised up, um, and this is starting to go down for the under, and uh, there's probably somewhere. Let me see if I can hold down the alternate key and there's probably somewhere where this will start to blend together. I just don't know where that somewhere is. Probably there. Yeah, it's not going to do that. So we'd have to create that braid all the way around, unfortunately. We'd have to create that braid. Well, it's not unfortunately. We just have to draw our vector lines all the way around, connect all the vector lines. So I can do that. Let me delete the models. Bear with me, ladies and gentlemen. It's not as hard as I'm making it out to be. We just have to delete the models. This, we got to control C, control V, copy and paste, flip it to the right, move it out, connect the lines. where they connect, so join that and that. Join tool. Fillet tool, put the fillet on those three points. Take that shape, copy, paste. I don't know why I didn't do this earlier. Wasting time. It's getting late. Uh, control C, Control V. Flip that vertically. using the arrow keys on the keyboard to fine tune. All right, select all of that. Join. Okay. So. Use our fillet tool. Got to find my sharp points. I might not have them there. There they are. One. Okay. Notice how that fillet is. There's duplicate. There's a duplicate there. So let me get rid of the duplicate. That's what I thought. One of my lines is a duplicate. There we go. I should have nice dotted lines. I should not have, oh, I should not have, it should be white and dotted lines. Dotted lines, dotted lines. Got duplicates up here, duplicates out the wazoo. That was from when I copied the models over earlier. Okay, all right, one more time, ladies and gents. 
I should have Okay, that's all good. That's all good. That's all good. All right. Okay. All connected together. It's one continuous strand. Here we go. Whoo, Lord of mercy. Model. Single rail sweep. Let me uh, delete these. All right, single rail sweep. This apply. Ta da! Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> All right. That is our rope board. Let's, uh, let's add a rectangle to that. Let's add a rectangle to that. I want that rectangle Yeah, I want that rectangle to be right on the outer edge. Okay, select my model. Select my rectangle. Last. Center it on that last selected object. Okay. And with that rectangle, I'm going to create a shape, flat shape. Let's go an eighth of an inch. That's fine. Okay. Let's go a quarter of an inch, 0.25. And let's go with that rectangle. Let's create another shape. This one's going to be subtracting. So we're going to go point, uh, 0.125. Let's go 0 0.0625. A sixteenth of an inch and subtract. Okay, so we had to connect lesson learned. I had to connect all the lines and just recreate the model with the connected lines. No big deal. That was easy to join those lines up, close them up. Had to make sure that we didn't have. Now, you see this right here that we don't want to happen. Okay, we don't want that to happen. The uh, let's undo that. Control Z. My model extends out just slightly. The rope extends out just slightly past those curves. So I'm going to bring this rectangle in a little bit, holding that shift key down. 
so it does it evenly, and then we're gonna reapply that. Don't wanna cut off the end of a rope. Okay. And that is a braided <laughs> rope border. Now, if you're wanting to know where to find like line layouts on how you braid, how you should draw your lines and stuff, create a grid, right? Uh, but this here, um, <clears throat> I just Google searched braided line vector and there's all kinds of different images and stuff and all but these there's three or four images uh, that Stan Pope created uh, to show just kind of the number pattern how it goes you know depending on if we are doing you know the two strands three strands four five six seven that kind of thing and those are helpful if you forget, you know, when you're holding, imagine three pieces of hair, right? And we're braiding or a rope, we're braiding that rope, you know, uh, and stuff like we're making friendship bracelets back in the day with paracord and all that stuff. Anyway, um, you're braiding that rope and all, this is kind of the pattern you follow, right? And uh, you you could surprise the woman in your life if you, if you learn this pattern and you end up going and braiding her hair, she'll love you to death. All right. Um, but that's our braided rope pattern. Let's answer a question here. Um, Lenny, were you humming the Frito Bandito song? I might have been. I don't know what that is, but um, I thought I was something psycho. I thought I was humming, <laughs> but it might have been. Um, all right, let's see here. Uh, I remember him too. Great commercials. Um, that's funny. Part two class. 5 a.m. coming way too fast. No, there's no part two. This is the end, JR. You have a wonderful evening, and thanks for sticking around. Um, that was the end. Uh, lady, once you copy and paste those and join them together after fillet, uh, would you resize uh, to the material size? You could. That'll change... Um, uh, it, it'll change the vectors slightly uh, as far as the spacing and everything like that. But um, you could very much uh, do that. I wanted, when it was all said and done, uh, Fred, uh, when it was all said and done, when the model was created, I wanted to be close to a half inch board um, and let me select the right component on here and if we you know these are spaced an eighth of an inch these lines here uh, so from here uh, from here that's a half but uh, we got one two three four and a half so half on one side half on the other uh, four in the middle that's five Eighth inch times five is a half inch, right? Eighth and eighth is a quarter. Eighth and eighth is a quarter. That's a half. Eighth and eighth times four is a half inch. So if I were to measure, from the, outside of my border to the inside, I'm right around, right around that half inch mark. That was based on eighth inch grid spacing with my lines. If I was doing a wider border, larger, or what have you, I could do that. But your question is, is was, hey, can we, let's turn off this, let's turn off all the models. And this is the last answer here. Uh, turn that off and turn that off. Turn that off and that off. Let's get rid of our numbers. Delete, delete. 
All right, let's take this and scale this up. Center it on the material. I could stretch it a little bit, but that again that change that'll change things up. But um, you know, I could do that and then sweep that around and it would be okay. So yeah, Fred, you can scale the vectors once you're you know, once you're once you're uh once you've created them and all. Yep, yep. All right, let's see here. Uh, all right, everybody, that's it. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for hanging out with me. Get some rest, get some sleep. You got to go to work tomorrow. So do I. Until next time, I'll see you soon. Thanks, everybody.